Hey guys, we are here to film the what are we going to call this? The bonus session, Adam. We have a name for yeah, this. Yeah, it's that we have we have not come up with a name for it. It was uh, <laughs> you came up with it about eleven o'clock last night, I think. Yeah, so I mentioned this. Uh, we we had a little. I had a little bit of a uh, got some things off my chest before we started recording. But um, Adam, uh, I I talked about Jay and I talked about having Adam speak um on one of the clinics but we didn't know what the surgery and the treatments and what was going to happen and i didn't want him that hanging over his head so we we're like yeah let's not let him just enjoy this like i don't want to make him work for this but then we were talking last night and we were talking about doing a thank you video i was like what if we did like a thank you session where we just had him come on and and for the people that 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 joined and signed up and so we threw it up on twitter got a got an audience they they listened to me complain for a half hour and uh, that was the price of entry. And uh, and we've got Adam here with us. So we're going to talk about two gap run fits. That's it. Yeah. Four down, three down, two gap run fits. Really informal. Um, so ask questions. Stop me if you need to. Coach Vass, we'll never. Yeah. And uh, it, we this may go different directions. I don't know where we're going to, uh, where this is going to go. I got, so. Yeah. We, I got tape on all kinds of stuff we can get into. So if we want to talk creepers you want we can get on the board i can you know i can pull up a diagram we can do it that way whatever we need to do okay well let's start with the two gap run fits and if you have questions drop them in the q a don't do the hand raise thing because i'm not smart enough to get this in and out and figure out how i'll do that so and i may be able to answer the questions for you um so we can let adam go all right um sure. go ahead coach you take it away all right how's that Want to know what the dark ages are, is on your uh, links up there? Is that just oh, old that's buddy? Is that for, old buddy that's Ryan? For, that's for school. <laughs> that's for school. I teach world history, so oh, okay. Uh, four hours of world history. Do I need to move that up? That bar. Can you see that bar? No. Is it anything up? Okay, we're good. Yeah, there's nothing bad there. Okay, cool. No, no, no. That <clears throat> the bar like that shows like share screen or pause share or whatever oh you're good for now it's not great yeah. it was graying out some people but not now okay cool if you if you can go full screen though for us did you now i i selected this but i always say you know make sure you do this when you shared your screen did you check the box that said uh select uh the i forget what it says hd video for screen sharing uh, try try on a video clip yeah try unsharing your um yeah that's what it's called did you just do that i did it's share sound and optimize for video clip yeah optimize for video clip hopefully that works it made it How's worse that? it makes it worse sometimes yeah well i won't know until it starts going so we'll we'll, we'll, we'll we'll check it out let me find a let me find a, a clip first let's see That's yeah, about as good. It's not going to be able to tell for you, but it's about as good as you're going to get on a live Zoom clinic using school internet, to be yeah. fair. Okay. All right. I'll go back. Now it got blurry, of course. I just said that. Okay. Now it's perfect. Okay. So I'll how about this? When you load up, sorry for you guys watching this on a replay. So when you load up a clip, maybe talk about it. Let it cut. You can see how it kind of loads up. Yeah, let it load up all the way so it's playing off the cache. I think it plays off of um, the cache because sometimes I, I know if I'm watching a clip and my internet goes out, I'm still able to watch that clip. I don't know. Okay. I'm not smart enough to know all that stuff, but that'll be I'm good. We'll do that. I'm, not a, <clears throat> I'm no tech guru, so yeah. Let, just let me know if it if it looks like shit or whatever I need to do. Um, to make okay. it look, so well, we're doing the best we can. This is a bonus, right? Got to lower the expectations. <laughs> yeah that's right all right coach uh, so first thing i want to talk about is run fit spacings i won't go too much into it because um to be honest with you you know as a coach you need to know but it's not like you're going to go into your room with your kids and you're going all right this is you know these defenses are seven man run fit spacings these are eight man these are nine man you know it's just for you as a coach you know i you control that with the defense that you call right um, like Coach Schumann was talking about the other night, when they run bracket, the bracket safety, even though he's away from the back, is not in the fit. 
So in certain coverages, they're using seven man spacing, but they're, they're playing a gap short. So they're going to either have to beat a block, run a stunt, um, you know, steal a gap some way with a, with an interior movement or with the technique that they play. And that's really what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about our fit mechanics and, and odd space and even space, and then talk about kind of the different ways we play uh, our defense alignment um, in head up techniques or, or inside um, you know, two gap, gap and a half techniques. So that's what we're going to start off with just so there's an understanding as we go forth for us, we really play mainly eight, nine man spacing. We do have some seven man spacing stuff, but we haven't, we don't do it as much because we haven't played as much. Um, we haven't played some certain techniques that help us play seven man spacing, help us play uh, a gap short um, with our, our, our technique up front with D line. So uh, it's really eight and man, nine man spacing is what we'll talk about. So seven man spacing, uh, I've got everything at an over here, um, at a four, three. So hey, coach. okay, never yes. mind. It, 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 it cleared up. It's, it's, it's a little blurry at first, but it clears up. So what, what I'll ask you All to right. do is when you're on a slide, yeah. do you mind? Uh, no, let, when you're on a slide, pause it. So that bar stops and it stop it stops trying to reload it. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Is it good now? Mm-hmm. Okay, um, <clears throat> so every, these these spacing slides here are all out of um, over. Uh, so this first one for us, it, like it, this would be like over pirate two. So Coach Marinelli will know uh, really well what we're talking about here. So that just means we're we don't have they've got eight gaps. They're going to be presented the eighth one with the fullback. We've got seven guys to play those gap play those gaps. So we've got to do something with the front to get the ball to where we have our extra players at, right? So our extra players, our force players are the two outside leverage clotted corners, right? So we're running a pirate stunt here, right? We're running a gap cancellation stunt. We're chopping the front up and we're gonna force the ball to spill. So anything ran into the pirate, right? It's gonna force it to bounce, okay? And then we're gonna bounce it here with the Sam. So he's gonna chase the pirate. The Mike's gonna chase the Sam and the Will is gonna chase the mic, right? Because the pirate, this B gap is no longer a thing because the pirate, if you run the football into the pirate, right? It, it's gonna force it away. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna force it to spill. It's gonna force it to bounce, right? So will linebacker can be an over, overlap player pretty quick, right? So that's one method of playing out gapped, right? Um, we'll talk about another method that we play with our D linemen. You know, you can play two trap, right? Put that guy inside, you know, but you're still, you've still got to be able to do something to, to get the ball to the perimeter because you don't have enough guys in the core of the defense to stop the run, right? <clears throat> so eight man spacing would be like if you're going to play cover three, right? Or cover one, you're going to play some one high defense, right? You've got eight guys to fit the run. I guess this is where like some guys, that have asked me about it. I've heard it for years because I'm like some of the older guys in here. I used to hear guys talk about eight man spacing and nine man spacing um, run fits. And so I, I was a young coach and I asked, what, what does that mean? What are you talking about? And they're like, well, it's an old way that NFL guys used to relate like how many guys are in the run fit. It was like, think of how many guys you're gonna fit versus 21 personnel. Like how, how are you gonna fit 21 personnel, right? So, you know, two back pro, you know, how do you fit that, right? How many guys are you including in the run fit? You know, seven, okay, eight if you're in one high, right? <clears throat> so that's an example here. You've got enough guys to stop traditional run game, right? Quarterback run game is going to be an issue. So you've got to do some things, right? Uh, you've got to play like a cheat safety and add um, add the, the, the safety and the fit like um, – uh, Georgia does right, and 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 how they play their their middle of the field closed um, safety. So you got enough you got enough guys to stop power, you got enough guys to stop lead, right counter things like that. So tr quarterback run game is the thing that's going to give you issues um, from that standpoint. So nine man spacing would be like if you're going to play quarters, right, and you're going to fit both safeties in the fit. Okay, so you're fitting nine guys. The corners obviously are playing, you know, all of one deep essentially, right? Or you can meg them on one, but you're using these nine players to fit the run, right? So, so you so like quarterback run game, you're going to be great on, right? But any kind of play action, overs, 
right? You're going to get this, right? I mean, you're really one-on-one. -on -one. It really stresses your coverage out, but you're really good versus the run. So, you know, that's why I think you've got to have more than one way just to, to fit than just to, you know, be in one sort, one form of, of, of fit spacing, okay? So, like here, um, like Bo Pelini would do this because when he first went to the Big Ten, they had a lot of 21 personnel, Iowa, um, you know, teams like that in, in 21. And so they would line up like this, but they would uh, change what safety was in the fit. Here I've got both safeties drawn up, right? So it's it's lever, spill, spill, lever, and the edge of the defense is the, the safety here to the tight end, okay? So again, spacing is just talk about, you know, how you would, if they, if they lined up in 21 personnel, right, like, like pro here, how many guys are you going to dedicate to the run, okay? So that's where that, that term, you know, the, as far as like how I learned it. So too high, eight-man spacing, odd front. So this is the base way we do it here, okay? Our four eyes, our big gap players, they're playing react attack. We call it mirror attack. Um, just because I don't like – I like using mirror attack instead of – react. I don't want to be reactive, even though that's what it is. It's just – it's kind of like a, a buzzword. What do you want your kids to hear? Um, you know, the terms that they hear are very important. How you talk to your kids is very important. So we use mirror attack because our footwork is mirror footwork, okay? Uh, when we play, um, you know, this two-gap, gap-and-a-half form of defense where these guys are B-gap players. Now our nose guard – as a base, we'll play, him, we'll play him several different ways. As a base, he's playing lag, okay? So he's going to play knockback, and he's going to play through the back half of the center, okay? So he's going to play the, the backside A gap through the backside ear hole of the center, okay, either way. So all you guys are familiar with, with, the, with the tight stuff, uh, but that's the way we base out of it. So the overhang players in this front, in this defense, are um, like that's how you have to – if you're going to – so if you're going to play too high defense and you're going to defend RPOs <clears throat> in modern football, you've got to identify who your overhang players are. So in this particular formation, two-by-two, 11 two, personnel, what we call spread, the, the safety to the tight end and the apex linebacker here, which we call the dog linebacker or nickel, depending on what, are, what uh, personnel we're in, are the two overhangs. OK, so obviously, you know, all you guys, it's, you know, since the, the dawn of time seems like, right, you've got to be able to defend zone bubble. OK, so coach talked about it the other night. And it's, it's the term that I used. I got it from Houston, like in 2008, is if I'm an apex defender, right, I'm the overhang in the defense, but I'm the apex defender. Instead of truly being apexed, if the back is to me, I'm going to be apex plus two. Okay, and I know they just said apex plus where um, I can't remember the exact alignment that, that that Coach Schumann talked about, but you know, for us, we're gonna be we're gonna be nipple alignment, split two in the end man. He right? said apex minus and apex plus. Okay, all right, yeah, I could remember it, like when they're apex plus, where number where the apex where the overhang aligned, like the align so inside it, eye of two. It depends. So he aligns. This is what was one thing that was interesting is he talks about apexing the gap in number two. Correct. You remember yeah, that yeah. part? Yeah. 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 Also, can nice, I can I give right. a quick shout out? Oh, never mind. He left. Rob uh, Osborne was in here. I was going to do a quick commercial for the University of Charlotte, but he he left. So, yeah. Bye. Sorry, Sorry. Coach Oz. I, I already, already bored you. Um, so, I, I want to get through this so we can get through get through the good stuff. Um, but just 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 understand yeah, it's that everybody you know if you fit RPO you've got to be able to fit this way right you got to understand you got to be able to I identify the overhangs by formation by your defense <laughs> by the structure of your defense right when you're playing too high defense so generically speaking our fit is always going to go we're always going to gain our fitter away from the back right because he's the one out of out of, out of conflict you know you get started getting pistol then it's going to be off of the turn of the quarterback right you start getting flop rpos now you've got start you've got to start reading the helmet of the quarterback some guys talk about reading the stripe of the quarterback right some guys talk about reading uh the ear hole of the quarterback um you know it, it, you've really got to work that if they're able to throw true rpo away from the back and you're in too high defense because then it becomes not off the back alignment it becomes off of the look of the quarterback. And you've really got to work that in, in individual and, and in your, um, you know, your team sessions. 
So if if we're playing if we're apex, we're apex plus two. So we're gonna we're gonna be a nipple alignment, but we're gonna cheat our alignment two yards closer, right? For us, we talk about apex alignments. We talk about apex plus two, and then we talk about like seam alignments. If we're seam alignment, we're, that's like when we're in cover three, and this guy's you know he's truly covering down number two, right? Like in cover three, cover one, things like that. Okay, so how we gain our fits with our overhangs are, the, are that way, okay? Now, how do we play our linebackers? So with our linebackers, uh, coach talked about it the other night. Um, you know, I've used the terms, again, I, I got this from Houston back in 2008, is stack track fallback. They would do it in, the, in, in Brent, at, at Coach Venables at OU would call it flow fits. And so when I learned the 3-4 defense, I had been a 4-3, uh, kind of a bastardized 4-2-5 later on guy. Um, and so the three, four was really, really weird for me. Okay. It was really different. <clears throat> There's no edges in your, you know, your, your edges are different. You know, you don't always are rushing four guys. So you don't always have a contained player. That's one of your down guys. It was just really, it was really messed up for me. So, um, when, when I learned how to fit and how to coach, um, you know, teach our guys and, and really teach me for me to learn it and then teach our guys that, you know, stack track fallback is what we used to call flow fits, right? So if we get inside zone here, right, he's down the four eye. <clears throat> you know, they're doubling there, right? They're doubling the four eye. They're basing out, right? Okay, is the the flow is going this way, but I've got to be able to fall back and play that gap, right? I've got to be able to fall back and play that gap, understanding that the overhang to to the back sides out of the run fit, right? He's he's not fitting. Right. And so we're going to gain that guy. So I've got to be able to to flow fit and fit off the flow of the ball. Right. Where I'm really a two gap player as a stack track fallback. Right. I am a to C <clears throat> if I'm that linebacker. Right. I'm C to A if I'm that linebacker. Right. To even over like we can play some seven man spacing things, take him completely, you know, we're not we're not fitting him. Right. We're not fitting him. And we'll tell we'll tell this guy he's C to A to see right and which we don't do that very much to be honest with you um but like if we were getting things like um like oh you a couple of years ago we're running like zone follow like beer follow so they're running this where he's downhill he's blocking right so this guy's out because they're running bubble right they're taking that guy out <clears throat> the back was leading up on the you know on the front side linebacker on your fallback linebacker right so he's he's chasing the four eyes he falls back spilling this well then you know if this guy was fitting the egg gap you had nobody you know, you didn't have enough guys, right? So we would tell him to end up overlapping as the ball stayed that, you know, because the, the ball's not threatening that gap, right? So don't go there, okay? Whereas, um, you know, Coach talked about hot fits the other night, you know, being able to, to fit it where you're taking double teams off. That's the way I was brought up. That was the original way that we fit. So when you start getting four eyes in there, there's no, like, clear gaps, right? Like, everything's cloudy because we used to just freaking spike gaps with those inside linebackers. And once you get into – playing, you know, four eyes and zeros and, you know, twos. Now you've got to start getting into that world where, um, you know, nothing is, is defined, right? Everything's gray. And so the ball has to define it for you. So again, same thing now, this guy's out, right? Because now, right, we're going to get the glances to this side. So now this guy's extra, right? Um, if you're having trouble, you can always boss or bow, right? Backers over weak, backers over strong to the back because you all are in eight-man spacing. You're fitting like cover one, so you're always going to get <clears> – you're always going to get the – in too high, you're always going to get the fit away from the back, okay? So you can always boss or bow to the back if you're fitting like this instead of just leaving them in, in 20s. And we vary. We go from 20s or 30s. So like um, – Here's an example of the, the, the backside linebacker here. Now they're in pistol. Our overhang does a shitty job here of reading the, the open of the quarterback, okay? But you can see 33 here, okay? He's going to tease it. He's going to go A, and he's going to end up overlapping, right? The front side guy is going to end up falling back, chasing the four as the ball goes downhill. But you can see it from the end zone, especially with 33. The ball doesn't enter the A gap, so he didn't go there. So he rocks. <clears throat> all the way back over the top.
All right, so here it is, butt shot, okay? You'll see him go A to overlap, okay, on inside zone and vacate the A gap because, again, the ball's not going there. <clears throat> Great tackle by the fallback linebacker. But you can see if it winds all the way back, I apologize for the video if it's laggy, guys, too. You can see him fall all the way back and over the top of, uh, of the front side linebacker. And they kind of six kind of IDs it wrong. He kind of he kind of dicks him a little bit. He should have, he targeted the the zone wrong. He should have targeted the linebacker that made the play, not the not the safety that we were dropping down on top of the the sniffer. All right, so here's a, here's a good shot of it. Okay, so two by two, ten personnel. So again, the backs on the defensive left, offensive right. Okay, so you'll see the 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 linebacker up here. Okay. <clears throat> completely work to the, the slot of number two. You'll see the, the front side overhang fit. And you'll see it work out the, the front side. I kind of want to talk about the, the D-line play here. I don't want to jump all over the place. I just may, I want to talk fit mechanics, but then I, especially when we get into our four down stuff, I want to talk about, you know, our, how we play our, the different, uh, you know, two gap techniques, head up, four eyes, things like that. So you can see the backside four eye does a really good job peeking in his gap, knock back, peeking around the tackle, right? Not over him. Front side guy, he 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 corkscrews too fast <clears throat> on 73. Here, yeah, the front side four eye. Cork screws too fast and let's go 70, 73 too fast. Nose guard was not very good that snap. Our funny story about this game, we had a, we had a big 300 pound nose guard that was a really good player. And before, this is a COVID year, before that we got on the bus, we were told that uh, he could not go, that he had been uh, in close contact with a COVID positive. And so we lost our nose guard uh, right as we're losing right as we're loading the bus to go to the game. <clears throat> so 67 was one of our four eyes. He was one of our ends. So um, that was that's always fun. Glad that's over with for now, right? So here it's shoot again. It's pistol, okay? So post-snap, we've got to read it. And we told our overhangs, man, We they, they both of these guys up top right here, uh, one's at Oklahoma. The other one is at Washington State. Really good players. We felt like we could win with five in the box versus uh, versus shoot. So we told our overhangs, man, everything's going to roll off the table, be really slow because they did a great job. They did the long mesh RPO stuff, um, and they would run like slant, glance, and then they would run um, a fin five-yard in behind it. <clears throat> they had some really good RPO schemes. And so we told our overhangs, man, you've got to hang on to, hang on to. The ball's going to roll off the table. Um, and, and we felt like we could, you know, we could beat a block up front, um, honestly. And that's, you know, as you watch the snap, that's kind of what we're doing. So this, it, this would be a kind of a version of, of seven-man spacing. We're playing two to both sides, a version of cover two. And you can see how, how slow our overhangs fit, but you can see the overhang at the top does a great job on the long mesh, holding, 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 and, uh, you know, staying inside the slant of number two there. All right, and again, we're just playing the, the tight front stuff. <clears throat> and they lock the box, block the five for five. The quarterback ends up pulling it because uh, I think we had the, the RPO fit up pretty well. All right, so here's an example of playing a tight front. Okay, again, same uh, same fit mechanics. 19's in the fit. Okay, uh, it's uh, it's two by two, 11 personnel spread. So four eyes, big gap players. Now, what we do with the nose guard here is we're going to play push, and I'll talk more about push in a little bit. He's going to be a front side player, so he's literally <clears throat> going to play front side of the center. Okay, so he's backed up off the ball quite a bit, and you can see as the double happens. Let me know if the if the video is bad. I'll try to slow it down here. You can see the, the nose guard play front side, 
right? The double team pushes him. That's what we called it, push. The double team pushes him into his gap, and he cuts the ball off, and it forces the zone to roll all the way out the back door. Now, we're not playing that same technique with the, with the, other, with the four eyes, right? Uh, I think we're actually in fours here, but you can, right? You can play that same technique with not just the nose guard, but with all three down guys. We don't do that very much, to be honest with you. The one guy we would always trade it with was our nose guard. So you can see it's it's uh, you know it's it's giving the offense you know some issues and in, in how they're going to you know who's going to come off on the zone you know where is the zone going to get cut off as you can see that the nose guard cuts it off and forces it to wind back. Okay, from the moon shot here. Um, you can kind of see it. Our, our 24 is really wide, even though the back's to him, right? You'd like that edge piece, right? That nine technique, five technique to be tighter. Uh, this was our safety. And for these guys, this was Union. Uh, well, Coach, he, Coach Maddox wasn't the OC at this time <clears throat> at Union. But it's the school he's at now. Really good school. Really, really good school. Well coached. Um, and so we wanted to uh, get more speed on the field. They were all 11 personnel. So we felt like we needed to get faster, so we moved our safety to, to Jack linebacker, what we call our will linebacker. So that's uh, the reason the, uh, the C gap is gigantic. By the way, wow. I talked to, I talked to Oz. He's with his uh, he's with his lady at dinner and was watching and tuning in. Don't do that, the, Oz. Dude, she don't she do gave that. him the side eye. It was, <laughs> you were not boring him. I was like, dude, I want to right. give you a shout out, a shout out, and you left. And he's like, I'm at dinner with the girl, and she's giving me the eye. I was like, damn, do we need to switch to a different topic, man? No, 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 no. Uh, no, yeah, yeah, go, yeah. Have a nice glass, bourbon, nice dinner, all that. Enjoy your lady. Um, all right, so this is a a, a good example of, of falling back. So we talked about stack track fallback and tempo on the ball here, right? So watch forty. He's going to work. He worked to me, he works a little bit too downhill initially. I'd like to see him hold his depth, work to stack on the zero, right? And as the ball stays downhill, now I'm going to work downhill as I fall back. Okay. But initially, for me, if I'm, you know, it, it, the, the, that next Saturday in film, I'm like, you know, Ethan, you got to hold your depth initially in your footwork, right? Don't go to where their guys are blocking you. We want to force <clears throat> lateral movement with these guys, right? We want to force stretch, so we want to hold our depth because we don't want these guys, you know, staying, you know, blocking us in a box, right? We want to force big guys to come block us in space and understanding my gap is not here, right? My gap is here, okay? So I want to force the ID for one of these guys to come off on me, right? And then I'm going to fall back with the ball, right? Same thing with here. I want to stretch, work to stack initially to the four eye and then rock back either A, to overlap. It's a really good job on, the, on with the nose guard on the double team, splitting it and getting back square. That's one thing we, we did a better job of the last couple of years is is not you know is is <clears throat> understanding when the when the when the double came off, and it became a combo, you know corkscrew square up. And be you know be a player. Don't just eat blocks. If I'm the zero tech there, okay. You can see forty rock back anyway. That's what this clip is for. As you can see, as the ball is downhill, he's going to fall back downhill really well. Number number eight does a does a poor job of of being square as he takes on the block. Right, he's got to be one arms longer than two. Right, keep the edge. Number four comes in, kind of cleans it up. All right, let's let's get to some some different stuff here. All right, so this is playing lag as a four four I. All right, I'm gonna go to the end zone shot here. All right, so <clears throat> we're gonna play a, a lag four. So we're gonna play knockback. All right, and so I know I haven't talked about lag. Uh, it's what I talked about with the nose guard. We're gonna come. We're gonna play attack react now. Okay, we're not playing mirror attack. We're not playing two gap true two gap football. We're gonna play knockback on this guy. Right. And if he cuts us off, great. We're going to play through his backside ear hole. Okay. 
right? And we're going to work. It becomes almost like a heavy five, right? <clears throat> if I was coaching a heavy five, I would say, you know, it's, it's his body, my body, somebody's in the B gap. That's the way I would coach this guy if he's, if he's cutting me off, right? But I'm going to play behind that guy's block, right? I'm going to be thick on it. My eyes are on him. I'm not reading the guard. I'm reading the man I'm aligned on, right? And so I'm going to become either a four eye or a five based on how that guy blocks. So here we get zone and you can see 67. I'd like to see him strike the guy and knock his ass back more because that's the whole thing is you're not worried about getting cut off now. You know, if you if he cuts you off, put his ass in the B gap and don't worry about getting cut off anymore like you do when you're in <clears throat> when you're in tight front, right? And you're just a, a four eye. Knock his ass back, okay? Because now we're now you can play this technique with smaller guys, right? So I don't have to be a big ass dense four eye, right? Like we had uh, two years ago in 21 and even 20, we had really big four eyes. So we played a lot of static front. We played a lot of like true tight front where those guys were big out players. 67 was about 210 here. Uh, 75 was about 215, 220 here. <clears throat> so they're not real big guys, right? So we wanted to play more attack react, let them get knocked back and not worry about getting cut off. We didn't want to play as lateral with all the mirror technique as uh, you know, as we did the last year in 21 and 20. Yeah, and this year was the same way. We played a lot more attack react lag with our, our four eyes and, our, and our, our zero plays lag as a base going into it. We have ways to – our fronts tell the nose guard and the four eyes or fours what technique to play. You see 33 rock back. Now, as he, as, he, as he falls back, he's going to fall back right in the B gap, right? But now we're just <clears> – <throat> we're changing the picture. So, instead of having to slant and manipulate the front and your run fits with movement, um, which is – it's obviously that's – sometimes that's good. But now we can – we can dictate the run fit by our technique that we play with those uh, – with those fours and four eyes. So, it, it gives you another option instead of having to play, you know, use movement, right, or pressure – to change the picture. Now we can change the picture with our technique um, and pre-snap look exactly like, um, it's gonna look exactly the same on, on, on either technique you play. Question. Uh, but it's changing the D-line technique as coach mentioned, changing lag, for the, lag to the front for the nose, change the other. Uh, it does, yes, um, Fidel, yes. So like if, like for right here, I can get back to it. So 33, as he falls back, he knows that we're playing lag four eyes or lag fours. He knows on zone if he rocks back now, instead of falling back and chasing 67's ass like he would in tight, he's going to have to fall back tight off this double team, which he's a little wide as you watch it. He's going to have to fit tight off the guard's ass. He actually overruns it a little bit. And he's going to think B gap now because this guy's becoming 67's becoming a five technique, right? If he was playing a true four eye <clears throat> and the four eye staying in the B gap, as this guy falls back, we tell him, as you fall back, you're going to chase the four eye's ass, right? We want to be able to hold his hand. We want to be able to touch his hip as you fall back in tight front. Well, now this guy's going to be outside, right? He's going to play knockback and end up playing the C-gap based on the cutoff block. So as I fall back, I want to fall back tight off that guard, right? I want to fall back tight off that guard's double team because now I'm a B-gap player instead of a rock back C-gap player. So as he falls back. So, yeah, those other guys do. And so as we change techniques, the front, you know, it's just like if you teach a, a blitz, right? The linebackers have to know the, the fits based on the blitz whatever you're running, right? Well, it's the same thing we do with our, with our front. So if we want <clears throat> these guys playing a, a jet technique, which is kind of a – it's a it's attack react lag, okay? Uh, what a lot of people call lag. We call it jet because it tells us it activates us into, um, you know, attack react. If we say jet, that tells the – or excuse me, jacks, because like our, our fronts are our cards, right? So we have joker, kings, queens. Jacks. So if we call jacks, it tells these guys to all play uh, jet technique. So all, all these guys are playing knockback lag. So <clears throat> we call lag mirror attack, but it's just, you're getting to the same 
you're getting the same gaps. It's just, it, it's going to look like mirror technique <clears throat> initially. Okay. So um, we really have, those are our three main techniques um, or, or modes of play with our D linemen. Okay. Uh, is, is jet lag and push, which I'll talk about those other two uh, in just a bit. <clears throat> so the, the front tells those guys what techniques the D linemen are playing. And it tells the linebackers, right? We'll call Jacks. They know what technique we're playing. He got a question in the chat. Um, yes. Just, and, and this is um, from one of the patrons that I have really great guy. Um, Bot heel. Um, and he may have touched on it. I may not have caught it, but he asked, does the D line technique as coach mentioned, changing lag to front side from the nose. Did you talk about how it changes the fits? Yes. I, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you may have missed so, it. Do you mind just 30 seconds going over that again? Cause I know not everybody's gonna be able to see this replay. I would normally wouldn't stop you and make you really explain, but do the nature. Not, of not, a, not a problem. Not a problem at all. So I was telling these, <clears throat> so mainly like on the back side of this. So like if we're playing the tight front where this guy's the B gap player and we're playing, you know, true two gap, um, we're in, in we're playing, you know, a gap and a half technique with that four eye where he's the B gap player. <clears throat> if we get zone, right, and we're working the stack, right, we track the back, right, the ball gets cut off, it winds back and we fall back, we're going to fall back off that four eyes ass, okay, nice and tight. We tell them you got to be able to touch the four eyes hip as you fall back, okay. <clears throat> now we're playing lag or what, like I said, we call this particular technique jet. Or we're going to, we're going to play attack react. We're going to play knock back on his ass and play behind him. We'll call a different front. We'll, we'll call jacks, which tells the D line, Hey, jacks, you're playing jet. So now as this guy rocks back and falls back, he knows that the open gap where he's got to fall back now is going to be more downhill. I can't rock back off the four eyes ass because the four eyes is not going to be in the B gap. I'm the B gap player. The four eye is now going to play <clears throat> the C gap. Now, as I fall back, I'm going to play the B gap. Front side, it doesn't matter. Front side, it's going to fit just like it does if you're playing tight and this guy's a B gap player, right? Okay, because we say, hey, play behind the block, right? He's going to play behind the block of the tackle. So on the double team, he's going to play knock back. He's going to corkscrew, turn his ass into the guard and sit into the double and hold the, you know, hold on to the, uh, the, the, the tackle there. Okay. So front side, it really doesn't change the fits on the rock back stuff is really where it changes their fits. Okay. Now, if this guy tried to cut him out of his gap, like on one back power, then yes, that's going to change his fit as well. So we tell this guy right on gap scheme to him, and I'll talk more about this later gap scheme to him. We're going to chase the end. Okay. Um, you know, whether it's a five technique, Four, four eye doesn't matter. If a guard pulls to me, I'm going to chase and I'm going to spill. Well, as he goes to chase, obviously we told him, hey, play behind the block of the tackle. So now this guy's outside. So now what this guy's going to do is he's going to end up levering that block, right? He's going to end up bracketing outside that blocker. And then this guy's going to vice the inside, right? Now you could spill and overlap the, the puller as well. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, just depends on how you want to fit it. But we tell this guy, hey, you can't pass open the open B gap. So I'm going to punch it, fit the outside B. The other linebacker is going to vice the, the puller on the inside. So that could be <clears throat> the other area that, that it might change the linebacker's fits. But they've got to be alert for, um, you know, what how the front, um, you know, what the front's called, right? Just to get to know what the blitzes are, right? Because you're going to – your fits change based on, you know, movement or pressure. So it's the same thing. It's it's same as we're going to teach our guys, hey, the techniques change, so our fits are going to change slightly. Um, but again, like I said, on zone, it's really going to change the backside. You know, uh, some power schemes, if you're playing, you know, lag slash jet with those guys, it, it could change it to the pull side a little bit. And then did you talk about how fat the back – and I'm sorry, I had to step out for a few minutes um, – did you also talk about the nose play in front side and, and, and how yes. the backer? I know you talked about yeah. the front side, but now how the backer is going to have to fill faster now. Yeah, so let me go back to it. Sorry, Just, man. I, I, I feel bad. Nope, I, I stepped good. out for a nope, second. You got other, other stuff going on. No, you're good. I just want to, I want these guys to get, uh, Get their money's worth, man. I'm like, I'm like the, I'm like the, the junior high version of Glenn Schumann here talking about run fits. So I hope, hope nobody gets bored. 
So yeah, 99 here. So on the zone here, okay, on the zone here. So these guys here, now in this particular call, we're just pushing the nose where the nose is going to play front side. So <clears throat> we're getting the zone double here. He's going to play front side of it. This four is playing the B gap. This four is playing the B gap, right? So we're playing that tight front um, technique with our fours, okay? Uh, or four eyes, you know, but they're the B gap players, okay? <clears throat> so their body's going to be in the B gap. So the nose guard's playing push. So he's going to play front side. So as he fall, as this linebacker falls back, he's actually going to fall back. What should happen? And it doesn't happen here. Um, what should happen is the four eyes should keep coming down on the backside, okay? <clears throat> 99 cuts the zone off, right? So 99 cuts it off. It winds all the way back. The four eyes should keep working inside. He ends up crossing the tackle's face and, and playing his, his secondary gap way too soon. <clears throat> and that, so the way it should fit is 40, 44 should fall back off 95's ass. 45, because 99, when they double here, right, okay, 99's cutting the ball off. He's going to become the, the front side A gap player. If you're playing it, if you're playing push with all three of these down guys, and this guy pushes to the C gap, this guy's going to end up playing the A and the B gap, right? He's going to end up cutting the ball off because what happens is it, we'll talk about push more here in just a minute because we run it more with our, when we're getting into four down, is now this guy works. He's going to play <clears throat> mirror attack, you know, attack or react attack, as, as most people call it. He's going to end up, the double's going to push him outside. He's going to be the C gap player. This guy's going to end up eating the A and the B gaps, okay, the, the nose guard. So the ball is going to wind back. He's going to cut the ball off, and the ball is going to wind back. So <clears throat> you end up with him – you end up with 44 falling back, and then you end up with 45. He should end up overlapping 44's ass, okay? So it, it gets a little distorted because we don't we – don't, our 4-I, our number 95 into the boundary, does not do a very good job of it. Is it better if I slow-mo it? Is, it? is the video better? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Okay. All right. I'll slow mo it then. I'll, I'll go back here. So you can see 99 pushing the double team, pushes him front side. And you can see 95, uh, the guy blocking him is getting ready to get drafted. Um, he was he was a three-year starter in the SEC, number 51. That's him. 51 is a sophomore here. Um, <clears throat> so he's really worried about getting washed down and getting caved down by, hit, by 51, who was a hell of an offensive lineman. But he's just got to trust it. Keep going, and you can kind of see that <clears throat> the targets for them aren't very great, right? So 44, see, that's the thing. Like 44 is too downhill, right? He's got to hold his depth before he rocks back, right? Hold my depth, make 52 come to you, and then rock back understanding you don't have a gap. But, again, this should fit like this, him off 95's ass, and then him – like that. He should end up overlapping 44. Okay. But the way they target, there's a gap there because 40, because 95's ass ends up in his secondary gap way too soon. So 45 does a great job and plays the backside a gap before he works over the top of 44. So again, that's just another example of how you can, you can do play that technique, that push technique with all three of your down guys. We just don't do it as much as in, in odd as we do in, in our four down. How um how hard is it to teach that technique? To the D lineman or the backers? To the D lineman? The, the, I'm sorry, the D lineman, like getting that nose front side. Cause I know a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people say that they don't play it because it's too hard. But you, you we've talked about this before, and I think you said it's easier than people make it out to be. Because the the way the way that teams now it's great versus and I'll I'll tell you, and we've talked, you and I have talked about this. It's great if you're getting a bunch of inside zone, right? So you're getting – we get more zone when we're in four down than we do in three down, right? You, you, inside zone versus four eyes sucks, right? You sh that's not a great play. Offensive guys that are listening, I'm lying, right? But, I mean, it's not a great play, right? So we get more zone in four down. So we play more of this technique in four down than we do in three down because of that technique is not great versus power, okay? So, uh, for example, let's say we got, you know, same side power here, right? So we get 52 on the double, right? They're going to double the four eye. They're going to cut him off. They're going to base, right? They're going to be down on, on 95, and they're going to roll up into the C gap, okay, with that guy. <clears throat> so 
So now what's the double telling this guy, right? The double is telling him, hey, dude, work away, right? So he's going to work away from this instead of, you know, corkscrewing and fitting into the double team like he does in our, you know, in, in our base, uh, you know, jet technique, attack react version. <clears throat> and so when this guy goes away, what happens? This guy's going to come off and he's going to block 45, right? And this guy is rolling up. And he's going to block your front side linebacker. That's cool because you're playing quarters and your safety is going to fit, but then they're going to throw a glance to this guy that's going to San Diego State, you know, so you got, you know, issues there. So, um, you know, what, what, what I kind of – and this I stole from Dante because I'll show you some of our old cut-ups of, of twos versus gap scheme and we're playing the push technique is not – it's not good, right? It was like when we first started running it, we started getting gap scheme. And it wasn't as good. We were using, we weren't, it wasn't doing what it what it intended, you know, what it's intended for is being able to fit a gap short. A guy like taking guys out of the run fit, being able to fit, defend the perimeter more, um, and taking guys out of the run fit, out of conflict, um, and and trying to steal gaps with these guys. So the way it would the way we teach it now, <clears throat> this guy's down. Okay. So these fours are reading the guards, okay. Their, their, their attack key is the tackle. Their visual key or pressure key is the shoulder of the guard, okay? So as the guard goes down, excuse me, the guard goes down to block, to, to double the two eye, he's going to step down, right? Because on the zone, he, we're asking him, hey, this guy's going to push front side. The guard blocks down. You've got to be in, inside, right? Because if you went inside the tackle, <clears throat> you're going to end up stealing the A and the B gap to this side, okay? Same thing with this guy. This guy's gonna push, he's gonna end up still in the A and the B gap, you know, on the zone uh, front side, right? And this guy's gonna end up cutting the ball off and forcing it to back inside. So you're you're playing all those gaps with three players, okay? On, and I'll erase all my lines. Looks like I'm on the whiteboard. Um, so versus gap scheme, you're playing push. Now this guy pushes front side, right? This guy's reading the guard. A guy's down, so he's going to be, he's going to be inside. Okay. <clears throat> now you've got to fit with the guy, the four or four eye away from where the guy. So where the guy's pulling to, that four eye from where he came from, the nose is going to end up canceling that gap, right? And you've got an overhang player to play the C gap. Okay. So what's got to happen is once this guy feels pull you got to have somebody cross the center, right? You got to have somebody cross center line. So this guy has got to play it like it's going to be like a pick. It's going to be like a NATO almost. It, it looks like a NATO when you do it out of two hot or out of a, <clears throat> out of even with twos. This guy's got to end Can up. Can you quickly describe NATO in 15 seconds? Uh, yes. Um, so it's where you read the center, where let's say we're in, in two techniques or a three in a, in a shade or a two in a shade, whatever. We do it out of twos a lot. This guy's going to block the two. We're both attacking the center, right? We're both two techniques. If I get his ass, okay, I'm going to pick his hip. I'm going to knock the shit out of that guy and then ricochet up. This guy is going to let the pick happen, and then he's going to wrap with shoulder square right off his ass. So it lets us, it lets, it's a different way that we can cancel both these A gaps. It's a great change up when you're playing different techniques with your two techniques. Now NATO is another way to cancel those A gaps. It's also great versus gap scheme because the, the wrapper, right, to where the guy turns to, where the guy blocks to, where the center blocks to, ends up being an extra overlap player. He's going to end up being like another linebacker. Okay. So you get, you gain overlap in the defense um, with it. It's great on, on third down too. Um, as a as a twist, we'll run it out of uh, out of double threes, <clears throat> you know, even front, you know, tough front, whatever you want to call it. So that's what's going to happen here is it's going to end. This guy's going to end up cutting the ball off, okay, on power, and it's going to allow this guy. Now I see pull, I see shoulders turned away. This guy's got to end up overlapping, and we're going to gain him in the fit. It looks cleaner out of twos, to be honest with you. It's a hell of a lot harder out of this. It's, it's way harder. It's a lot easier out of two techniques to, to do that, where you gain that backside four eyes and overlap player. And it is it's, – I shouldn't say <clears> – it's not easy, you know, but it's like, what do you want to do, right? Are you going to be a big blitz movement team? Then this is shit you don't want to invest in. If you're going to be 
a, a static team and you're going to teach technique, and I'm not saying that because we blitz, right? We teach technique. But I'm saying if you want to play base defense and that's going to be your MO, then I think it's worth investing in. Um, and that's that's what we do. We play, you know, we we <clears throat> we start from technique and, and base, and then we build into movement, um, you know, simulated, uh, you know, and then true pressures, et cetera. And, and we, we do all that stuff to stop the run, too. But I want to have answers to play base defense in different ways and, 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 you know, dick with the offensive, you know, how they're targeting us. I want to mess with how they're targeting us in the run game and be able to play different gaps. So I it, hopefully I'll clear it up um, as we go through here. And let me know if we have any more questions. I'm going to try to get through some of this shit. I know we're probably running late. All right, man, whatever you want to do. All right, it's, this is just primary, secondary with, the, with 75 here, okay? <clears throat> well, we don't have the damn tight shot, of course. 75, so the backside four. You can see that, that's the biggest thing with me is, is when I was a four-down guy, man, we wanted to crowd the ball, right? Credit card alignment, crowd the damn ball because we want to, you know, we're key in movement, right, on, on rundowns, and we're key in the ball on pass downs. We want to be as tight, you know, to the ball as we could be. Um, and so when we started playing, you know, two gap and, and mirror, we backed up off the ball uh, quite a bit because it gives you a better angle. Like, um, I think we're just in fours here. This guy, you know, steps to cut you off. Now I've got some, I, I've got some distance between me and him where I can recapture my gap and not get cut off. It, it, it helps me. Same thing with movement. It's the same thing when we move, we're going to back up off the ball a bit. So this is just the, the 75 here playing primary, secondary. So he's playing, he's playing primary B gap, and we call the point of no return. I know the ball stays front side here, but the point of no return would be if eight bends back, right? And we're locked out, eyes in our gap, right? If the ball wound back, we call the point of no return. As soon as that ball gets behind 71's ass here, that guy blocking him, then we're gonna shed and we're gonna cross his face. I've got some good clips of uh, of our four eye doing it here in just a second. Let me get to him as a matter of fact. Of of primary secondary here he is okay let me let's get to the tight shot here it's 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 44 up top okay he's at the top of the screen i'll go slow mo you have to you have to help me out in case i forget so it's a great job going one arm longer than two so you see him he's we're reading the tackle here we're getting a cut off block you can see him breastplate shoulder pad and then he gets both arms locked out and then he locks out that arm that's on the man so he has his gap side arm come off he's long arm in the tackle and you can see him play primary secondary so he goes two arm longer than one snatches him arm over and he ends up making the making the tackle now they, they didn't target us very well because we would have been free with the linebacker um, and our outside linebackers actually makes the tackle but 44 does a great job of playing, uh, of playing primary, secondary. Here's another one. So let's get to the tight shot here. It's really good. So 44 is here. Okay. All right. We're just playing static. So we we're playing the B gap. We're playing that tight front fit. We're playing attack react with our nose guard here. Okay. We're playing mirror attack with our four eyes. So you can see the guard, the, the guard and the tackle are down, okay? And you can see 44, that's how you play 4i, man. Like forever, that'll be on my teach tape. Now, he doesn't do a great job of crossing face, right, of playing primary, secondary, all right? But this is a great job. It's like teach tape of two arm longer than one. And I didn't want to get at Coach Snyder, but he put some clips on there of me. Now, they beat us this game, but uh, I had to put a couple of Bixby clips in there. That's that's a uh, that's a, that's he put really clips good. of you for your clinic for you. He, he did, uh, yeah. The ESPN game and the semifinal. So uh, Coach Maddox did. Coach Maddox put one play in there, but he also put one of us <laughs> playing well against him. So I didn't want to put any of Coach Maddox in here, but I didn't. It didn't hurt my feelings to put Coach Snyder's in here because you know, wow, you, you're a defensive guy, right? You, I mean, you got you got pride, right? I, I you know I know what the cause is for, but still, I'm a, you know I'm a damn competitor. And, 
he put that on there. So I was like, okay, we're going to make sure we put Bixby clips in here. So I love Coach it. Snyder, I love you, brother. You make me a better coach, but uh, uh, we're, uh, you guys got us this, this night, but you know, and they do, and Tyler does a hell of a job. They're the coach Montgomery. They're they're unbelievable, averaging like sixty five points a game. And so over the last two years, we've held them to their three lowest outputs, maybe the last four years. So we held them to 28, 30, uh, tw sorry, twenty three in this game right here that I've got pulled up, and then in the semifinals, twenty eight with four takeaways, and then in the ESPN game. I'm not, I I hate when guys go over their 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 stats, but it was. You know, to hold this team when their second lowest scoring game but besides us was 49 points was pretty impressive. Our kids played their ass off. It wasn't anything with me. It was our kids played with with uh, a, a great a great deal of determination and, and we're pretty pissed off. But, um, yeah, Coach Snyder, I'm sorry, brother. I love you, but I, I did have to throw that in here. And, and they're, they're tough to defend, man. We certainly didn't kick their ass, dude. They, it was, they make us, you know, they make you earn it every damn snap. And, and every in the weekend, man, you're up there till midnight working on all their motions and formations and shifts and, and all their tempo. And plus they do it, you know, they're, they're, they're fast as hell on offense too. So, so anyway, so great, great clip there of, of one arm longer than two. Okay. On the lockout. Number one's a hell of a player too. A Braylon Presley's at, uh, he went to Tulsa. He was at Oklahoma state originally and went to Tulsa. He's a hell of a player. So um, and that made it even more difficult. Watch it from the ass shot here. I'll slow it down. I won't. So, yeah, it kind of, that's 77, probably didn't put that on the recruiting tape, but uh, 44, I know that was one of his better shots. But against a good team and with really good players, well coached, that's, that's a good snap of football there by 44. I think this is similar here. This is one arm longer than two with, our, with, our, with 44. Yeah, pin and pull. So now it's a really good snap of it. So we read the guard. So we get pin and pull. I know gap scheme versus four eyes, right? It's what people want to give you, right? So we get a bunch of pin and pull. And even gap scheme, we get uh, uh, counter power when we're in we're tight front, uh, more so than zone. So <clears throat> we were reading the guard in this particular situation. So it, it activated him, right, into the tackle, okay? So he's playing primary B, secondary C when the ball crosses, okay? And, and he ends up cutting the ball off and – Get a bunch of hats to, to the football there. But that's a hell of a job there by 44, playing primary, secondary, and not doing it too fast, right? Because if, if he crosses too fast and we're fitting the backer over, right, ball crosses too fast and it cuts back and, it you know, it seems us inside we got we got issues. So that's a hell of a job by 44 of being patient, waiting until the ball crosses the point of no return, and then, um, you know, and then snatching arm over. All right, I think that's more the one arm longer than two. All right, let's get some just some spill overlap mechanics. All right, so so we're going to get power into the boundary here. We're in tight front. We're just in in you know we're in we're in four eyes. Okay, so thirty seven. So the way we fit, we talked about stack track fallback. That does not exist in gap scheme. So as soon as we get pullers, okay, <clears throat> he's B gap right. He's going to fit into the Double team, okay, in the, in the front side of the gap, corkscrew the double. We tell the front side linebacker, okay, in our two high, we're going to spill over. And we spill overlap as much as we can, even in four down. And I'll kind of talk, talk you through how we do that. 37 wants to chase 44's ass, right? And then 40 wants to chase 37's ass, okay? There's no rocking back, falling back, none of that stuff, okay? And, and we're indicator fits. You can even see 40 here. So we're, we're, we're reading the fullback sniffer. Yo, whatever you want to call him, it's it's you know, Coach Roberts talked about it last night uh, what people refer to the indicator. So in this particular, I think we're in we're in like press quarters here. Um, the the indicator is the 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 sniffer, okay. And he's tucked inside, so you know his power, right? Is he's he's splitting the crotch of the tackle, man. He's tucked in, you know, you're getting, you know, he's going to kick out this guy, right? In some way, or you know, and and because uh because <clears throat> the back's alignment, right? Probably think you're getting power. So 37's a little wide. 37's a little wide here. Right? He should be off of 44's ass, man. Okay? I got to be downhill. I should be able to touch 44's hip right here. Okay? He's got to be here. Okay? No air. All right? 
44 has got to be able to touch 37's front side hip with his backside hand, right, as he overlaps. He, wanted, he wants to chase his vapor, okay? And that's literally the coaching point we use. It's going to be chase and spill. Overlap player, you chase his vapor, man, as you overlap. Okay, you get in his jet stream. But I, what I like here is watch 37, man, okay? He's a little thick on the guy, on the pulling guard, but this is how you strike blockers, man, right there. That's a hell of a job. Watch the – let's watch the tight shot here. If I get I, – I, I get fired up, guys, when I see shit like this, man. Because watch – watch 37 accelerate, right, and watch the guard's head, man. Like, like this is this is how you this is how you block destruct right there. You can see pattern or pat on like his head down, right? I want his eyes through his throat, man. Eyes to his throat. That's a great job, though. Love it. All right, this is spill overlap. Let's get to uh, all right. Here's a good one. So again, we're taking we're too high defense. I think we're in um, <clears throat> we're in quarters up top. Okay, so this overhangs out of the fit. He's apex plus two. They're going to run power RPO and read him. We're in this, uh, what we call deuce, where this guy's going to relate to the sniffer, this backside safety. And we're going to play, you know, press or off quarters. Uh, usually in the boundary, we're going to play press quarters. See our corner walking down into it. But the end zone shot, it's a really good clip of, of spill overlap mechanics. You can see 33, they're late, getting, <clears throat> getting a little wide, right? Getting a little wide late, 28, tight off 67's ass, spills it right there. 33 is a little wide, right? Ends up making the tackle, but, um, you know, with Deuce, we got an extra guy there as long as we can hold up into the boundary one-on-one. -on -one. But that's, you know, that's this is on our on our install for, for spill overlap teach, uh, teach tape. And you can see they, uh, you know, they're, this is not Coach Maddox's offense. So it is union, but it's, it's pre him. Um, you can see 23, right? He's playing the RPO, right? He's out of the fit backs to him. Okay. And he's just, he's hanging, right? I think we get another, it's just spill overlap again. Uh, let me get to this, uh, so this is spill overlap out of so this is actually lever spill lever out of tight front. So we're in we're in eight man spacing, okay? Lever spill lever. <coughs> so you can see the front side fifty backer lever the pull. The spill backer is a tick wide, okay? All right, don't want him necessarily that wide. I like him more downhill, right? Right off the right off the the, the four eyes ass, and so they end up, you know, you're you're in and out the pull there, right? And the the safety, okay, the backside fifty or forty player is going to be under the tight end, okay, right? So you're you're bracketing or vicing the pull with those two guys, and that C gap, that gap that's underneath the tight end, because your four eyes playing the B gap, that C gap player is the backside. Uh, backside lever player. That's that's a good fit of of lever spill lever, one high fit mechanics. All right, so talking about overhangs out of the fit. Okay, you can see watch backs to him. Okay, watch this high safety here. We're playing some kind of quarters. I think we're playing four press. And you can see him. You know, waiting on the glance. You can see them, they're run slant. They ran it early in, early in the game. We about picked it with our corner. So again, they're going back to it, right? He sees the safety sit, hands it into numbers and, uh, you know, good guys win. All right, so this is the same side power. All right, good, good, uh, good picture of spill overlap here. And you can see 33, we get to the end zone shot, okay? So we're gonna get power. To the boundary, I'll go slow. And you can see that it's actually dark, okay? <clears throat> 75 crosses, good job, right? So if we get T-pull with our four eyes as a base, we're going to cross that, okay? So if we get this, all right, and we get tackle pull, we get, you know, dart, <clears throat> we're going to cross now, okay? We're not going to wait till the ball crosses or anything like that. We're going to cross inside now. 
not like pin and pull. So 40 spills and 40 and 33 shoulders never, you know, come unsquare. It's a great job, right? I think coach calls it skate. Footwork coach uh, Schumann calls it skate. So that's a really good picture of, of skate footwork by 33. All right, so let's let's get out of odd. All right, let's get out of odd. Let's get into four down. All right. All right, so two gap even. So I'm going to go through mainly how we play the front here because we've talked about how we fit, you know, two high defense, <clears throat> eight man, eight man spacing mainly. So mainly I'm going to talk here about, about how we play our twos. So even lag. So they're both mirror attack. So <clears throat> what that means is I'm going to read the guard. That's why the, the guards are red up top. Okay. And we actually call this, a, we call this front different now. Like we don't call it even. Um, we're going to use a different name uh, to get us to play uh, lag. So what that means is we're going to use mirror technique and make sure my wife's not. Um, we're going to play lag. We're going to use mirror technique. So mirror technique is we're going to be square with our stance, okay, like that. And <clears throat> we're going to step with our key. So in this one, our key is the guard, right? So if he was to – if he were – if he was – if he were to reach us, okay, it's going to be lead step, trail step, right? And I'm going to play knockback, but I'm going to end up playing through the back half, right? So it's more lateral. It's more of a true two-gap technique, but we're playing the back side of the block. We talked about jet, right? Where it's attack react, we're in a staggered stance, 60, 40 stance, you know, as far as our weight distribution. And we're going to play knock back on the guard and play through this backside of your hole. In mirror, it's, we're going to be 50, 50 with our stance. Okay. Even I've had some guys that even played like 40, 60, as far as like 40% of the weight was on their, they're in that frogger stance, right? 40% of their weights on their hands, 60% on their, on their legs or on their, on their backside. Okay. And uh, it, so the, the, the modes of play and are, are vastly different in those two. Okay. When you play jet, you're playing, you know, attack reaction. It's the same. It's a similar technique as you would teach a three technique or a five technique, right? You're taking six inch power step. How fast can you get the second foot in the ground? All that good stuff. When, when you're playing two gap or gap and a half, when you're you mirror technique, okay, um, you, you're not you're not you're not getting off the ball, right? As far as like you're not getting up the field, I should say, you're getting off the ball based on your man key, okay. So in that case, it's the guard, but they're going to play behind the block of their uh, of the guard here, okay, and they're going to key man on, all right. So ball key, okay. Or excuse me, <clears throat> we're going to man key this. Okay, and our visual key and attack key are the same thing. They're the guard, okay? Now, down here, like we talked about push, you're going to read an adjacent lineman. It's almost like playing a six technique as far as your eye, where your eye placement is, okay? So if we play push, these five techniques are going to play regular, um, you know, five technique. We're going to play a little bit wider away from the back. We're going to try to squeeze and play tighter to the back, right? thinking we're going to get down blocks, right? When the back's to us, we're going to play a little bit heavier five, not a true heavy five, but we're going to play thicker aligned on that five technique. So our visual key is the shaded shoulder of that center, okay? The near shoulder, I should say, of that center, okay? So if I'm this tackle here, I'm reading this shoulder, all right? My attack key is the guard, okay? So if I'm playing head up, my hand placement, we're going to be pit and pit. If we're shaded, we're going to be choke right on the throat, right, and pit. So if I was a four eye, that's where my hands, right, that's my aiming point for my hands. If I was a five technique, it would be choke, pit on the other side. Okay, if I'm playing head up, it's double pit as far as like where I want my, where I want my hands, where I'm striking the blocker, okay. So now we are mirror stepping the center shoulder, okay. So if we got zone this way, okay, my first step, it's going to be lead step, trail step, okay? I'm going to step with my right foot first, my left foot second, okay? So it's, it's, it's lead foot, lead step, trail step, all right? This backside guy, he's reading this shoulder, right, the nose guard here. So, again, it's going to be the same thing, right? It's going to be lead step, trail step. 
All right. And what that does is as he works inside, he's going to work his hat into the gap and his hips into the gap. <clears throat> and if the center blocks away on zone scheme, he's going to end up eating both those A gaps. Okay. All right. So we dictate basically, if you look at it, right, we're dictating where the bubble is. I'm a 4 3 guy. And so the way it made sense to me was all right, if we're playing jet or lag, all right, the shade is away from the zone and the three technique is is to is excuse me the shade is is, a, is where the zone's going to right and the three technique is to the read side which is what you want right you want a big gap defender so you don't have to, so you don't have to, to squeeze and scrape right <clears throat> in push it's just opposite right our three techniques going to be to where the zone's going and our shade or two eyes going to be away uh, from where the zone's going to the read side. So you're creating the bubble to the read side, to the running back side. All right. So now again, this, right, jet and lag are really good for, for gap scheme and both. They kind of have, they, they work both, they work well, both those schemes. Push is really great versus zone, but it takes a lot of work uh, versus gap scheme. That's where the, that's where the, uh, the, you know, the magic comes in. That's where like, if you're going to do it, you got to sell out to it. It can't be, hey, this week we're going to do this. It's got to be something you, you sell out to, all right? So I'm going to eliminate spacing so we can get into the tape and, and start. You guys that, that are on here and, and people that are listening understand, um, you know, fit spacings and all that stuff. So I want to watch our D-line here, okay, and start talking. So, all right, we're in uh, too high. I think we're in quarters, all right? So we're actually in eight-man spacing. He's out of the fit to the back. He's in the fit, all right, just to give you an idea. We didn't change our fit spacings, even though we really don't need him, right? We don't need the guy away from the back because there's no bubble because the B gap is going to be taken by this front side too. And this is actually a penalty, but this is a great picture of what it's going to look like, all right? Coach Vass, let me know if it's, if it's, if it's decent looking, all right? So we're going to get zoned to the offensive left here, all right? So this front side two is going to step, all right, and he's going to end up cutting the ball off as a three technique. So once he cuts the ball off, now the zone's going to wind all the way out the back door, okay? <clears throat> How you play is five techniques up to you, right? If you want to be a bender chaser or a surfer, the bubble's to you, okay? So to me, alignment-wise, he needs to be thicker on that offensive tackle in his alignment. We want to try to friction the down block, okay? We want to try to eliminate that bubble that's going to be in the defense on the zone with our alignment, being able to friction, get hands on that down block. So you can see the two, the front side two, okay? And they target the linebacker, right? So when he comes off, they target the linebacker. When that center leaves, the backside two is gonna in, end up playing both A gaps. You can see when he leaves, there's one gap there and the backside two plays it. All right, let's get to some live action shots here, all right? Go tight shot first because our end zone shot's kind of messed up. Okay, so they're going to run zone to the defensive left. All right, so reading that shoulder, reading that shoulder. The end zone shot here, it's actually pretty good because we're we're playing, we're playing Coach Vass's. We're playing we're playing double robber though. We're playing robber on both sides, and you can you can see our 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 boundary safety triggers too fast because he's really overhang out of the fit, but our front side safety looks like a shot out of a missile in his fit. All right, so we're getting zoned that way. So he's gonna end up cutting the ball off, right? He's gonna end up becoming the three technique, okay? The backside two is gonna win his hat inside, right? So when he wins his hat inside, he's, he's in the center climbs, he's playing both A gaps. So the ball has got to roll back door. So again, you can get, you know, you can gap exchange with the five and the backer, right? Or you can surf, okay? Our, our inside linebacker here does not do a great job. <clears throat> He's not do a great job initially with his footwork of staying flat, all right? You can kind of see him more downhill. This is uh, from a few years back, okay? But this, this uh, my D-line coach, shout out to Tyler Cade if you're watching, brother. Still the man at teaching two gap defenders, man. I, I've never been around a guy that's that's been better than than him. Uh, he's my D line coach, and they were by far the best 
uh, the best coach in this particular technique. So you can see 93 starting to work in the A gap. I don't like that step, right? You'd like to see him turn his shoulder. So this was when we ripped to escape. So when we would escape the block, we would rip and it would turn our shoulders. Now we want to snatch with that left arm. So if I'm 93, I want to snatch, right? <clears throat> Throw his ass with my left arm and bring that right arm over. Okay. And it keeps my shoulder square, right? Or I want a two hand shrug release, right? So I want to throw him with both my hands and snatch with both hands, throw him off of me. We call that shrug. A one arm is a snatch arm over. Okay, but it would it would keep his shoulder square, right? And he's making the tackle instead of the five technique and the linebacker there. So let me run it back here because this is a great snap. All these clips are on like when we install our teach tape. You can see the center, you know, doesn't block the linebacker, and he actually works up to the, the, the robber safety to the field. But, again, we shouldn't need either safety, you know, on its own. All right, so that, that's shot with, like, iPhone negative 11 film there. So let's get to a butt shot here, all right? So you can see the center working away, right? I want to see him stay square, right? Don't rip. He rips off and it turns his shoulders, okay? Stay square. You can see the front side, too, does a great job with his footwork, and he ends up being the three technique. Forty-six a little bit better. Forty-six a little bit better in his footwork, staying lateral, staying flat, and forcing the the forcing the sixty-six. <clears throat> as a matter of fact, like he ends up like sifting to the overhang backer that's not in the fit. All right, so we play Union in the playoffs this year, okay, and. What they would do is they would block the box, okay, with the five down guys, right? They would block five for five, okay? So how they ID'd it is it looked like same side zone. And it may have been same side zone. I've never asked Coach Fred, to be honest with you. Um, but instead of blocking, you know, it's zoned this direction, okay? Instead of blocking it like that, okay, or even like that, all right, when they lock it, <clears throat> now they block it like this. Okay, they block the two head up. The center actually doubled that way, right? So, uh-oh, what do we do, all right? So now this, we told our linebacker that week, and you had to do this a bunch, obviously, to be able to change this in the, in the state semifinals. So our 46 is going to end up falling back because the zone's going this direction, okay, as far as the blocking scheme, all right? They're blocking like that. The center's going to the front side, too, to the mic because they're counting it. Okay, he's got the two eyes cutting him off. He's got the five technique. So you'll see 46 actually work this way, all right? But the zone is going this way. And so we told him on zone, hey, you got to read the hat of the center, okay? By the way, as you under key, right? We're reading, Coach talked about the triangle the other night, right? Our triangle is, is like this, actually. You will want to see the guard and the tackle to the offset back to the other guard and the, the, excuse me, the other uh, guard and tackle away from the back. Okay, that's our trying. We wanna see the whole picture, you know. He used a, a sniper scope, right? We wanna see where this, 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 that's where our target is, right? But in those quad quadrants, man, I can see the guard and the tackle, okay? Uh, and then I'm gonna be able to see the other opposite guard and tackle on flow. And, and that's in zone, okay, like zone match defense. That's just a base way we, we key it. All right, I'll slow it down so you can see this is a really good picture of our, of our, our push twos. And 46, <clears throat> working over now, right, because the zone, they're blocking it opposite. Okay, so it made it really difficult. And it forced us to change kind of how we, you know, how we saw it. Same thing here. Okay, we're getting a lock zone, okay, because they locked the box through RPO, you know, <clears throat> to both sides, po one, one post-snap, one pre-snap. So, again, it's the same thing. Okay, 77, the center's going to block to the offensive left. And 
and you can see 46, right? It makes, you know, it, you trigger fast and, and 77 can't, can't come off and, and block you. So your answer is like, right, to block, like take the center straight to the mic right now and just base everything. And then that's where you got to be able to run NATO and, and like Coach Coach Vassin or something about our, we were talking about earlier. You got to be able to, <clears throat> you know, read pop it or NATO it um, when they, if they're able to just base block it, right? Block it like freaking dive. You gotta, you gotta be, and then, and then now all of a sudden, now that's when your movements and things like that come into play. All right, so we're gonna get that opposite fit again. Boom. I'll go slow. So 96 does a good job. His footwork's not very good, right? I don't know why he's stepping out. But he ends up playing refitting, right? He's playing, he's in the B gap initially, right? He refits, crosses his face, ends up getting <clears throat> into the A gap to force the ball to the B gap. Can you see 46 in the safety there, I'm blocked. All right, I think this may be more traditional here, okay? So they block zone both ways. So that makes it, you know, that makes it tough. Okay, you can see 46, understand, you know. Because you see 77's climbing now, right? They're trying to, they're trying to block it like dive and climb now. 46 sees it and understands how, you know, the, the ball is going to get cut off and it's going to roll all the way out the back door. <clears throat> And so he presses the line of scrimmage a little bit more instead of working into 77. So here's gap scheme, all right? So here's, here's power, all right? They're gonna block back, okay? They're gonna base the two, they're gonna base, all right? Hinge this guy, roll it, all right? So we told our twos in this, if you got, <clears throat> If you got base, you're gonna like you're gonna end up fitting the A gap no matter what. So like if if you got in the B gap like 96 did a while ago, you got to refit, okay, and play back into the A gap to get the ball pushed outside to where we're fitting our overhang players on gap scheme. Because I'll, I'll show you the way that we did it. Okay, we were just fitting it like eight man spacing. Okay, the 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 overhang player spills it 40. You see number five here. Should really be spill, or excuse me, lever, spill. You should vice the pullers. We got an inverted safety here. If you're playing cone, whatever, we were playing inverted two on the backside this, this particular game <clears throat> many moons ago. So now, like it ends up like the, the two eyes front side, okay, and the, and the three techniques backside. We well, don't like that versus gap scheme, okay? And if you want to play it out gapped, which is why you're playing the technique, we just didn't do it at the time, is if you get back block, right, and you get the power, okay, <clears throat> this guy pulls, what happens is this guy's gonna end up being in the A-gap, right? So he's gonna end up being like what? He's gonna end up being like the NATO nose, right, that we talked about earlier, okay, or the, the picker, all right? Um, and so <clears throat> as the center blocks back, center blocks away from him, excuse me, he should step inside and he should end up end up taking that backside gap, that back door gap. He's going to end up cutting the ball off, okay, and securing the cutback where we know that the ball can't cut back. Now this guy, okay, center blocks at me, guard pulls. Now I want to end up overlapping front side and crossing the center, okay? So now he could lever it, okay, and now this guy would end up spilling it, okay? He would end up being like the backside linebacker, okay? <clears throat> I hope all this makes sense. I'm going fast. I get fired up. We start talking about, uh, you know, being able to play our D line a couple of different ways. So I may I, need to erase some of them lines, Coach. There you go. <laughs> is that better? So <laughs> yeah. I, I, I no, got dude. I'm, I'm got, just giving you a hard time. You're doing awesome. lines up there, but uh, so here's a good, here's a good picture of it. Okay. So again, I'll show you how, this. I showed you how we did. It. So how we should have done it, right? Is he's going to end up being inside and cutting the ball off because he's reading the center. Center blocks away. Right, so it's going to end up fitting like a, a, a NATO, okay, torch stunt, right? However, you know, gate stunt, whatever, whatever lingo you use, right? Tom, read Tom. So <clears throat> he should strike, knock back the center, 
right? And then he should end up releasing and overlapping. So you don't have to use any of these secondary players. Okay. So you're going to gain him <clears throat> as an overlap linebacker. And so it should be outside the pool and inside the pool. Now, is that easy? It's not. Okay. But we run NATO, right? So you're just saying, hey, <clears throat> it's going to get picked and the fit's going to be like NATO because we run NATO on, on rundowns. Okay. Where this guy on the snap, working that guy's hip, he's going to pick the hip of that guy. He's going to get he's going to get rocked, right? I mean, he's our, our guys love running this because we get to knock the shit out of the center. And then he's going to wrap with his shoulder square and he's going to be inside the puller. It's got to be outside the puller. We do that in NATO all the time. So so as far as <clears throat> it's a little bit the same ass, okay? But again, it's something you got to rep. Is anyone you're good at, right? You got to rep it, take some work. And it's something that if you do it, you got to sell out to it. Uh, all right, this is uh, this is Jet, okay? So we're playing Jet twos, we're playing even. <clears throat> if you need, I know your throat's bothering you. If you need to pause and grab some water or something, Coach. Uh, let me, let me I, throw, I got throw, you. Throw a drink of, of Mountain Dew here. There you go, or Mountain Dew. I also, I also it's diet Mountain Dew, sweet. God's nectar, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'm ready. Yeah, I, it sounds like I'm the, the guy from something about – or uh, Long Came Polly. <laughs> the, 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 the guy that's his buddy that's the kid actor that's been in whatever. I can't remember the name of the movie on there. It was uh, – Kenzie would know. We love that movie. So <clears throat> I kind of sound like him at the end, given, a, given his, uh, his presentation on uh, whether they should ensure – the the uh, the Australian guy. Sorry, sidebar. All right, let's get to back to ball here. Got off topic. All right, so we're just playing jet uh, up front, okay? So we're pl we're playing not back. So these guys are playing attack react. And we're going to play behind the block of the guard. All right, so we're going to get pull front side. <clears throat> now the 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 two to the pull. Uh, you know, we're going to wait to the ball cross the point of no return. We don't cross this fast. I know Vass and some other guys cross fast we don't we're going to play this a gap on the back block and we're going to wait till the ball across the point of no return before we cross as a base key now in push we don't do that in that in that technique we talked about a while ago we cross fast on pulls because we know the front side two is going to cut it off in this one though he's not cut there, there's there's an in push he's got the a gap right so i can cross now i can cross fast all right <clears throat> in jet we're playing not back now. He's going to fit into the the double team front side. He's going to corkscrew, and he's as soon as he feels pressure from that guard, he's going to hip into him and all that. Um, you know, uh, he's going he's going to corkscrew and, and play into the B gap, hold the double. It comes off. You know, he's going to square up and and be a player. You see, eighty seven splitting, squaring up, and he ends up making the tackle. Ninety seven, really good job here. Of, of playing the point of no return back block <clears throat> he strikes the center knocks him back and then he ends up crossing his face once the ball gets to the uh, the point of no return Playing Jet again here. You can see 97. What's a good good picture? 97 corkscrew split the double. So again, we're playing not back on the guard. We're playing attack react. We're coming out of our hips and hands, right? When I'm playing push and I'm, or our mirror technique, right? When I'm playing a true two gap, it's got to be feet and then hips, hands, right? When I'm playing attack react and I don't have to worry about getting cut off, now I'm attacking up the field vertically and coming out of my hips, right? And then it becomes feet, hands, okay? Or it's gonna be hips, hands, feet, right? In attack, react, okay? In, in, in mirror attack or react attack, as some people call it, <clears throat> it's, it's the opposite, right? It's feet and then hands, hips, right? Okay, your hands and hips are simultaneously, but you've got to step lateral when you're playing mirror technique because you can't get cut out of your gap. In jet, right? You're not worried about it, so let's come. Let's come out of our hips uh, when our when our key moves, right? All right. 
let's get to let's get to the end here and start wrapping it up. That's all. This is all jet stuff. So. That's it, coach, as far as that goes. Um, I know I went fast because I wanted to get through all the techniques that we played. Are there, are there any questions the guys have? I uh, asked mine, yeah. We'll throw it out to the uh, audience here um, and see what uh, if anybody else has any questions. Um, that was a really great presentation, Willie Wilt. Throw it up. Excuse me. Pardon me. Thought out. Um, very easy to understand. Well, that that that's the thing with with us is you know in, in high school we are a large school, but both our guy. I mean, our D linemen don't, but most of our guys play both ways. Our skill guys play both ways. So on Monday, I only see our guys that play both ways for fifteen minutes. So for us to be able to teach the things that we want to accomplish and have a, a have a lot of you know broad toolbox to pull from. We've got to be really good coaches. We've got to be efficient with time and we've got to be able to, there's got to be carryover in your scheme. So you're not saying that, you know, well, this is this and this is something else and this is something else. There's got to be carryover in how you teach it. And I've got really good coaches that do a hell of a job of helping me out um, and making sure I don't, you know, put too much, you know, put too much on our kids and that there's carryover in our scheme. And so I think we've done a good job of developing it because you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to be as diverse as, as we are because I think I like to think we have we do a lot of stuff you know and 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 do it well and we're not you know we don't confuse our kids um, but we give the offense a lot to prepare for you know the the shit that you know, keep it simple stuff you know keep it simple stupid that's horse shit hundred percent and some offensive guy you know said that and and you know propagated that shit so you know I I hundred percent you know I, I learned this a long time ago from. Uh, yeah, it's at Paul Huska. He was at Muskogee, maybe at the time. He was old. He was defense coordinator here, Matt Hennessy, um, long, long time ago. He coached the Legion of Doom defense. They gave up less than 100 yards in a, se in a single season. So, um, yeah, that was like the greatest Oklahoma team in high school, you know, high school football in Oklahoma. They were unbelievable. Rocky Kalmus was on that team, guy that played in the NFL. They were unbelievable. Um, wow. 100 yeah, yards the whole year? Whole year, coach. Whole year. You know, uh, we had um, we a couple of years ago, it was 21, we gave up like negative eight yards like two or three times. And uh, one of our kids, he may even put it on Twitter, was like, hey, coach, you ever seen a defense hold anybody that negative yards? And I'm like, yes, I have. And they played at this school and they were unbelievable. So don't think you're that good. All right. Because you're always going to be second to those guys. That, that shit will never happen again, man. No, not with the way. I mean, you, you get three kid falls down, you get three fade balls thrown on you. Yes. Yeah. But you said something yep. interesting. I think there's a really big misnomer um, or a mi not misnomer, a misconception about high school. People say, well, high school has to be simple because, you know, your players are at a lower level. But high school practices are longer than college practices and NFL practices, way longer than NFL practices. In fact, I know a couple – my my mentor Keith Burns came from the pros to high school, and he was trying to have an hour and thirty minute practices because you don't have the meeting time. So the whole like, oh, we have to we have to go simpler because we have less time. That's not true. Now, college now is a little different because those guys are practicing year round. It wasn't like that when I was coming up. Some schools got. I mean, even I mean, I'm not that old. I'm I'm, I'm 38 years old. 2006, San Jose State, the kids went home for the summer. This is right. within 20 years ago. Um, you know, so, but now it's, no. there's the OTAs and the spring ball, and then there's the May OTAs, then there's summer where the players are running the practices. I mean, it's year round. But in the pros, like, the difference is they have like six hours of meeting time. You hear that, but they don't. They really don't. It's a lot of self study. And, Here's what I found. Now, if you're in a place where you have to platoon and you, you kids have to go both ways, that's a different story. But I find there's, I don't want to get too, I don't want to get too political on here. This is not political, but like there's anti-intellectualism in this country. And that's like cool now to like be dumb. And like, it's cool to like 
not be smart. And I see that with coaches. Like, I don't know if they just don't believe that they have the influence or they're, they feel inadequate that they don't understand things. And so it's easier to make fun of other people who are doing things that are more complex than them. Um, you know, but this idea that, because there's those people on Twitter that are like, you'll see it during the season, like all these guys with these big call sheets and these other stuff, like, you know, there's a lot of bad coaches that use complex stuff. There's also a lot of really good coaches. And unless you have superior athletes, you got to, the, the, the more you can do, or the, the, the more you can refine, um, you know, with your time allotment and in your skill level. If they're getting confused, it's your fault. And if yeah, you can't yes. coach it, that's fine. But don't make fun of other people because there's been comments here and there towards me, like, you know, not towards me because, I, you know, most people don't bother me because you know what I'll tell them to do. I'm not very professional in that manner, but people will make comments about things uh, like kind of more generally and. You know, like, oh, you don't need all that stuff or, you know, those vague, you know, people like vague tweet. And it's like, listen, dude, just because you're a shit coach doesn't mean that we have to be shit coaches, too. Yeah, you, you said it. you got to put it on the coach, right? You got to be mm -hmm. put the pressure on you and your your coaches to be hell of a teachers, right? To be yeah. great teachers of the, of the game and have a system to where there is carryover and you can't have a big you know, call sheet. You can't have a bunch of calls because your kids understand it because you've done a great job of teaching them. Now, it, you know, I'm not a big fan of, well, they do a bunch of shit, so we've got to be simple. Or they go really fast. We want to be simple. That's what they want you to do, right? That's what, yeah. that's what, that's why tempo, they want you to be simple and line up in one front and play, you know, one coverage, you know, instead of, hey, we got to have answers. All right. How are we teaching it? Right. How can we teach it where our kids are going to understand it? And, and we can make it work, right, to attack the shifts, the motions, the tempo, the different things that, that offense is going to give you now. You know, I, I'm a 100% believer that, you know, that keep it simple shit is 100% against it. Our head coach will fight you if you come in, if you say that as a defensive coach. If you say we're going to keep it simple, he will because he is a very intelligent guy. He's a defensive guy, and they were not simple before I got here. And so – uh, he would have fired me very quickly had I said, well, we're going to keep it simple, coach. Um, that's just not his philosophy and his belief. We're going to challenge our kids with, with as much um, as they can handle. And, then, and again, hey, my first year here, state championship game, the way it was formatted was you had a week off before the state championship game. So it's like the Super Bowl. So you had you had you played and you had a week off and you played that not the next Saturday, but the next you know Friday or Saturday. And I put too much shit in that first week smartest guy on our team. He was our, he was our Mike linebacker. Or we call our buck linebacker. He comes up to him and he's like, coach, you know, the, the, some of the new third down stuff. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm lost on, I'm like, all right, it's off the call sheet done, you know, too much. And so that was one of those instances where, you know, smartest guy we have on the team comes and tells me, you know, we got too much shit in, we got too much stuff in. I got, I got to start, you know, I get taking out the new stuff, you know, maybe awesome, maybe great, but our kids didn't get it. So we're not going to run it. Yeah, and, and I'm not saying be complex for complex sake either. Like, you yeah, know. no doubt. And and I'll tell you this: I coached, and I publicly said this. I don't feel like I'm shitting on anybody, but when I got to Sarah in 2013, it was everybody lined up across from each other. And Parodi, I don't know if Parodi's still here. Um, he's in. He here. actually is. Um, what's weird when I? That's so strange. I said his name and the attendees, and he's the only name to come up. But Brody will vouch. I mean, he was at Sarah like five, four or five years before me and the same shit. Everybody was running the same things. And so there were games where I could be simple because they were insanely simple. Like if I'm playing an I team and they only run weak ISO and strong power. And a dive like you don't you don't need much, yeah, you know, so weekend. yeah, yeah, but. I'm talking about before you even start and look at the opponent, we're going to keep it simple. Now, there are exceptions, okay? And one, th one of the things I need to get better at, and one of my resolutions for this year is I try to put out content that would make people like you, people like King, people like Kogan, people like Dante. Well, Dante's in college now. So is Kyle. But like high-end high school coaches can sink their teeth into. I know there are places in the country where football is not super important. My buddy Ray Dayton and I talk all the time. You know, he talked about, you know, just getting kids in upstate New York 
where he was was hard sometimes they would quit to go work on the farm because not that football wasn't important but they had to help make money for the family and if they did come out they'd have to miss practice because they had to go work to keep the lights on i'm not talking about that i'm not talking about places i had a friend that coached in connecticut and there was 25 kids on the team yeah you got to keep it simple because you're gonna have to use all of your players there's obvious i just want to make this clear there's very obvious things also if i had freakish athletes like we had colin hitzler on the other night they were a super awesome man team they had sauce gardner and the guy that won the thorpe that wasn't sauce gardner would would you play zone cover i wouldn't play zone I'm, i love quarters i mean quarters is man so there's that whole thing but like you know tampa two is coming out of the playbook unless it's like a drop eight and it's like super situational yeah i ain't passing off shit there ain't no passing on crosser. So I understand in those scenarios, you know, now that he's gone to Wisconsin, I, I, I don't know this to be sure, but I mean, they're the best cover three team, one, one of the best cover three teams in the country. He'd be smart to run some of that stuff. Right. So there's obviously caveats. I know that there's schools with 24 people and, and <clears throat> people that are playing very simple offense and guys don't have time guys with like three coaches. Like when I was at Los Altos, I had, three coaches on my side of the ball, including myself. One was an O-line coach, rest in peace, Rick Raznick, who we were talking about Munkin earlier. This is the guy I'm talking about. He was, he, if you gave him too much individual time, if you gave him more than 15, he'd start doing O-line drills. Well, he's a former division one head coach because he was the O-line coach too. Yeah. I'm 23 years old in my first job. You think he's going to listen to me? And then the linebacker coach was the Mike linebacker's dad and didn't I love Mike McGillis, but he hadn't coached in, I don't think he'd ever coached before. So I had to keep things simple and not plus I'm 23 and it's my first job. So yes, there are, and I need to make stuff that's more accessible. Um, but I also think if you go in, it's expectations. If you go in being like, well, they can't understand stuff. You want to know how my kids understood stuff was I said, if you don't understand this, you're not going to play. Now they had to call my bluff and they didn't want to. So, because when I got to Sarah, they were like, what the hell are you talking about? Because Patrick played more simple defenses, but he played like three different systems and he wrapped them into one. Mm -hmm. So there were less calls, but complete different structures. So he played like under lever, spill lever, over too high and over cover three, and then like three, three stack. So, I mean, that's a whole, so there was a lot of stuff, but it was fewer things, but different complete families where we were kind of in the same time, you know, same area code or whatever. Uh, analogy you want to use but it was like way more shit and the kids were like coach i can't learn this stuff i'm like well it's june so you better start or you're not gonna play and i just walked away i didn't let him now like you're saying it's a state championship game and your smartest guy comes to you and goes dude i i don't know that's a whole different story but if you start telling kids and you start telling other people in june oh we can't do that our kids aren't what what do you the kids aren't stupid they're gonna figure that out here's the thing my advice to younger coaches or older coaches and challenging them go in saying, this is one thing I want to say, and tell me what you think about this. Go in saying, I'm going to install 135% of what I think we're going to do during the year. Do that. And then scale back rather than being like, we're going to play. Like I worked for a guy who wanted to play over cover three week one over man free week two. Uh, over cover two the third week. I'm like, what, are we going to work on cover three or are we going to wait back till the, the circle comes around? Like, that's not how you teach. And you're not playing in, uh, you're not playing, sorry, you are playing in August. You're not playing in May or June. You're, you're playing in August. Your goal is to get ready for a season, just like lifting and stuff. You periodize or whatever. I'm not smart enough to figure all that shit out. But you don't do the same kind of list. I am smart enough to figure out you don't do the same kind of list in February that you do in August or in October or in December, if you're lucky enough. So do that with your scheme. Yeah. I'm going to break the, like, I went to St. Francis and these kids were like honor roll, National Honor Society. And I, I gave out the playbooks and uh, they didn't read them. And the first practice, their eyes about bulged out of their skull and I wouldn't slow down. I'm like, I'm not bailing you out day one. Don't bail your kids out. Have the emer have plan B, have the emergency handbrake, like the point of no return, but push their ass and don't give them an out. We're doing this. And if you can't figure out the next guy's plan and make them call your bluff. Now I know there's situations where you have Ray Lewis Jr. I don't mean actually Ray Lewis Jr., but like Ray Lewis reincarnated. And 
you want to like keep them free and let them run around. Like again, there's 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 also scheme considerations there too. But challenge those guys. Don't give them a way out. Don't tell them, oh, we'll simplify it if 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 you don't do this. No, it's expectations, right? It's the Pygmalion effect or whatever it's called, where they they gave that that landmark study. I'm sure everybody knows what I'm about where they gave a, a a set of teachers, two groups of students, and they said this is the honor students and these are the C students, but it was completely random. But the honor students perform better because the teacher was like, no, a B is not good enough. You need A's. Where the C students would get a B and they'd be like, good job, Billy. Yeah. People rise to the occasion. Anyway, yeah. I'm off the soapbox. That's not what we're here for. We do have a question in the chat. And some of the newer clips that you showed, it shows that your D-line was backed off a little bit. Can you explain that? Or was that just by chance that that happened? No, when we play, when we play mirror attack and we're playing like two gap, we're going to back up off the ball. Um, it gives us a better angle of departure, um, you know, better mode of transportation versus um, like, let's say I'm a four eye and I'm a B gap player. If I'm backed up off the ball, I can, you know, if I'm getting, you know, zone to my right, okay, or cut off block to my right. I can step, step, <clears throat> and have a. I've got, I've got a better angle to not get cut out of my gap by that tackle. Whereas if I'm, you know, crowding the ball, I, I talked about this. You may not have jumped in there, coach. Um, but if I crowd the ball, like when I when I first started, we were over, under, crowd the ball. You know, um, you know, outside shades, playing attack, react all the time. We wanted to crowd the ball. Well, if you do that. And you're playing a, a four or four eye, and you're saying, "All right, you're a B gap player." Well, if you crowd the ball, get in that credit card alignment, that offensive lineman can cut you off, has a much better chance to cut you off. Whereas if you're backed up off the ball, now you've got more room, um, a better angle to stay in the B gap or A gap, whatever gap you're, you know, you're playing as a two, a two eye, you know, a four four eye. Um, it just gives you a better angle to win back your gap. Same thing like if you're, you know, long sticking or two facing, whatever technique you want to call it. Uh, if you back up off the ball, you've got a much better angle and it helps you, it allows you to not get cut out of your gap by that offensive tackle or guard or, you know, whatever your alignment is. So um, that's it. I mean, like you can, you can see even on some of our clips, we're backed up off the ball. Some of our guys would take, like they would have a staggered stance and they would play uh, instead of playing mirror, they would play a, a version like attack rap, but it was just up down because some guys like they felt more comfortable in the stagger stance, but it was just right, right left. It wasn't a true like attack react step. And those guys were able to still, like if it was zoned this way, they were still able to step with that right foot, you know, lead step, trail step, and, and maintain their gap if they're off the ball. If they're crowding the ball, they got to, you know, probably going to get cut off, um, you know, if you take a, take a poor step. I was fortunate enough to have class with Vince Wolfork and um, at Miami, he came back to get his degree. He left. I think we were the same class, but he actually, I think he was a year old, a year younger than me, but he came, he went to the draft, I think as a sophomore, redshirt sophomore or whatever. And so he graduated before me, but he came back after his rookie year and he took an intercession class with me and uh, during like spring break or winter break or something. And we were on a bus going to something it was funny. We were going to a Red Sox, uh, Red Sox training camp because it was a sport class. It was like the sport industry in South Florida. And we were going to see um, a uh, minor league baseball game. It was the Red Sox. They were playing the Red Sox uh, tra spring training. And uh, he's like, I'm, I'm going to try to be incognito. I'm like, you're the biggest son of a bitch I've ever seen. I don't think you, you can put on the farmer hat and the glasses. Everyone's going to recognize you. And they just won the Super Bowl. And, uh, so we were, I was just wanting to get into coaching at that point. And we sat in the bus and he was drawn. I still have it somewhere where he drew the fronts. And he said, look, I was a three technique in high school. I dominated. I was a three technique at Miami. I dominated. And he goes, I got to New England and this MF -er put me in a head up nose. And I'm used to being like the credit card alignment and all that. He said, Bill Belichick puts me in a zero technique and I'm getting my ass whipped. So bad you can hear the H and whipped and whipped. Um, and uh, he's like, dude, it's the worst. He goes, I was used to whooping the shit out of the guard in front of me. Now I got one guy's maybe coming, the other guy's coming, then they're both pulling, and I'm trying to get front side. And he said, The first thing he did is he backed my ass up a yard. 
until I got more comfortable and I could see out of my peripheral and then I would I would move up. And uh I I was taught I played D-line and Pop Warner and I was I didn't know anything obviously. And I was a two gapping nose and I didn't know that at the time. It wasn't until much later in life. So and it's it was weight restricted and I was always a bigger kid. So here I am as a sixth grader playing against eighth and ninth graders, the same weight. So you don't even get like the advantage of why, well, yeah, they're, they're older, but I'm bigger. No. And playing three, four, two gap nose. And I can remember them telling me, try to get uh, like the little bit I remember here and there was trying to get front side. And I'm just getting my ass kicked because we all weigh the same. I mean, there was a guy named Pooh Bear who was kind of got a little famous. He whipped my ass. I mean, it was, <laughs> could you imagine trying to teach a sixth grader to two gap nose and a three, four? That's the same size as the center. No. Yeah. No, no it's chance. Crazy. No. Now the I, sixth grade Jinx Maroon defensive line coach, we, we play odd, but we don't, we don't play like mirror two gap. You're the, you're the sixth grade D line coach. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and yeah, it's is uh, that it, part of your contract is being the DC. It is not, uh, but there's a there's a, a four technique and a nose guard that lives in my house that's in in sixth grade. Uh, they'll be in sixth grade. Uh, that that play, he'll play sixth grade football. He plays he plays a, an age up, but yeah, dad's the D line coach. So did you did you do you give him like you give him like the opposite of the, the special treatment, but the other way? <laughs> yes, yes, he does I, not. I knew you would practice. No, he, he does not. You're gonna make that him is, quit. That I try not to. I try to you know, but I want to like. When we do drills, we do the drills with the high school kids. That, I mean, with the with the sixth graders, like we're doing the same. Like we're we're oh, working the same on, drills or with them, like in the drill. Well, I'll show them how to do it, but I don't like literally do it because they're. Oh, still gotcha! I was like, Jesus Christ! Uh, yeah, I haven't yet. I haven't broken. I was like, shit! I know Oklahoma's different, but damn, <laughs> I haven't done that yet. No, but no, we we do the same. We do the same. You know, same same type drills. We'll do the you know um, the. Uh, steer drill and um a lot of the same things we do with that with the high school d lineman so do you slant them or do you backdoor them we we backdoor them we play a lot of knockback and play backdoor leverage and it's like five man covers it's five man pressure covers zero every snap oh my god <laughs> now, and you're now not this the dc year, you're not the, yeah, you're just I'm, the line coach? DC, yeah so it's like oh. it was one call now this year we were able to start blitzing so like we would able to slant the front so like we would give like Rip and Liz calls or Roy and Larry calls and and move the move the down guys because we don't flip anybody we play right and left. Now we did our outside linebackers because we had one dude that was a freak and I always wanted him to the field because he was our best player and fifth grade football fourth grade football everything's on the perimeter so I just moved him strategically where I thought they were going to run the football. It's awesome. It's it's I actually the other six it is more coaches. nerve wracking than any game as a college coach or a high school coach I've ever been a part of. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, I bet the other the other middle school coach is like, "Yo, what the hell, man? They yeah, got the, the referee, Jinx varsity DC over here." The re I'm calling like I don't remember who it was. We're we're I'm we're playing them, and by alignment, it was like they were giving the play away. So I'm like yelling at the kids where the play's going every time, and the referee comes over halftime. He's like, "Coach, you can't be doing that. Man, you can't be telling you guys where the play's going every snap." And I'm like, "Well, tell the offensive guys to get smarter over there. Quit." Yeah. And, then, and then, oh, we played one team. They would yell the calls out, like they had the code words. So rocket was right and laser was left. So like they would give all these funky numbers, and the coach is yelling out rocket, rocket, and I'm like, run right, <laughs> run that way. Uh, Got to teach them their keys early, coach. Cut throat. It's cut throat. Do you have like the dads that come out in the full camo and shit, like you see on TV? Did you ever no. see that show, like the text? I can't. I couldn't yeah, watch it. Yeah. I, I, I snapped. Yes. No, it, not that bad. Not that bad. It's, it's pretty, I mean, I've seen guys get into it, you know, verbally, but no, no physical. I'm like with me, it's like, you know, I heck fire. I, you know, we are they more. still on the, are they, are those coaches on the YouTube trying to find those trick plays too? Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like we got beat by a team that ran like, well, I won't, I won't say who it is. It's, it's a team we play. Their little league team beat us and they line up in like, they run like wedge every snap. And just push the quarterback or the ball carrier wherever they go. They were like, so they were they getting like three back, like this three back. So and like, the, it was like stacked behind the the three backs were stacked behind the guard, the tackle, and the tight end. And they would just run quarterback 
I, like, I love that you said we um, won't say who it is, but then you give away the entire offense, which anybody that's watching can clearly piece together who it is. I well, love that. I do Jinx the same Oklahoma shit. Or Tulsa, yeah. No, well, they don't run the high. No, they don't. The high school doesn't run this. It's just the little league. It's no, I know. The, That'd be like yeah. earlier when I was like, I don't want to say who the coach is, but he was he coached the head coach of TCU for twenty years. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's uh, amazing. Anyway, uh, I don't. So we how, may want to edit this part before it goes to the. You know, for Kenzie's clinic, there may be some people that uh, want to want their damn money back or something. We, we, we've this gone down. free, dude. This we've gone free. down a rabbit trail. Nobody has to. Nobody has to. Nobody has to <laughs> stay. What's the uh, what did what did I say? I was like, he, he saw me and start. He's like, I've been saying rabbit hole too much. I said, yeah, it's Pavlov's dog. You saw my ass and you're like we're, we're going down rabbit holes because that's when we get together. Sometimes we'll be 30 minutes away from the, the initial comment that derailed us. Yes. And we'll look at each other and be like, what the hell were we even talking about? Yes. We have a comment in the chat here from Ethan Cavalier. This is what it's all about. Just wanted to say thank you for the clinic this week. I'm 18 years old and played receiver in high school, so I didn't have any experience in the front seven on defense. This week truly helped me understand and get a good grasp on a lot of different defenses. Well, I, we, if you could teach this stuff to, to guys that have never coached before, hoping that it can, it can get through to coaches that do this. Uh, a lot more and have a lot more experience. So thank you so much for the uh, t- kind words, Ethan. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you, Ethan. Yeah. And um, his wide receiver guy. So he's like me, he learned from, you know, back end to front end. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, starting out, I had no idea. I had an understanding how to coach linebackers and, and kind of how to. What position did you play? I play in high school. I played outside linebacker, but it was, we were a four, four. So it was really like strong safety. And then I played running back and then in mm-hmm. college I played safety. So you, we need to get like an all make defense great again podcast, like find out everybody's position and get like an all time team. Yeah. I, now the, the position I like coaching the best now is D line. Like that's, that's the, my baby. Like I love, I think it's the most important position on the field by far. And I'm a, I'm a former DB guy, but um, as far as, um, especially in high school, uh, I think it's wildly undercoached. I think you get a lot of, sick them you know get your you know let's just get off the ball tee off and let's go you know see the ball wiggle let's go um so you know especially in in odd defense when you got to play some two gap stuff i'm not i think it's a little bit under coached um so i, I kind of as i learned it like ethan said he's a d you know wide receiver probably played db some i learned it from you know back into front end so when i learned when i became a head coach we switched to the odd defense the first year we played three four and i was the d-line coach so Coach Gato is the head coach. He's also the you know down there an individual with the D lineman because um, my the guy that taught it to me that's kind of like my D line mentors Jerry Montgomery who's with the Packers now. He was at uh, at Oklahoma at the time, and so I went and visited him and um, basically was like attached to his hip for a few days, and and he taught me scheme, but more importantly taught me um, because he's a, he he learned it from Pete Jenkins. As a matter of fact, when when they went to it. Um, Pete Jenkins came and uh, consulted Bob Stoops and and Mike Stoops and that whole staff when when Jerry was there. That's very so cool. That, that was yeah, that's how I learned. That was where I first learned it. Jerry's a great dude, and and you know, gave old Harry High School coach uh, his time. And I've known I knew he was in Northern Iowa with a buddy of mine that's at Oklahoma now that we coached together at Broken Arrow. So Jerry would come down and stay with him when he would recruit Tulsa. And so that's how I got to know him. We would stay late and do what you and I are doing right now, just get on the board and shoot the shit and go through scheme and, you know, talk ball. And, um, you know, that's that's kind of where, where that relationship started. But that's how I learned all the odd stuff, you know, up front and, and how to fit. Because it was like blew my mind when we first went to 3-4. I, I didn't didn't understand it. Didn't yeah. I? Did not understand it. Like when I first went to it, we would, we would angle back to over or under every snap and bring the jack. Like we lined like we were like so like it was uh, I think saving those guys call it we call it solid I can't remember what they call it, where the jack always travels with the tight end like eleven personnel so we did it like that like the the fourth rusher was always from the time I mean we weren't very, we saw I'm like we can't do this shit we I got to go to somebody and figure out how to actually do it so Jerry was kind enough to mint closed that's it there you go yep closed so. That that was uh, that was where it started, and it sucked. And I did a piss poor job of coaching it, so I had to go to somebody to teach me how to how to coach it. And, and Jerry was kind enough to to lend a hand. And then I've got guys like you and Kyle Kogan and Dante and 
you know, all the other guys that I, you know, Kinger and those guys that I've stolen, you know, how to play the, the odd front. Dude, they've taught me how to play the, the odd front. I taught you odd front stuff or are you just being nice? Because I, I, no, I'm I pretty sure it. if you put a gun to my head, I don't like the true. I'm talking about yeah. the true Patriots 3-4. I'm still sketchy on some of the details. Well, I mean, dude, you gotta, I mean, you're you are really well versed in in odd defense. Now I know it wasn't like that was your not your thing when you were DC, but I feel like I'm since I'm then. I'm mean, I, I'm always been like I don't know this shit. No, you no shit, dude. You know he did a whole tight front uh, thing for Coach Tube, right? Yeah, I, I don't I, consider. I know that's odd, but I consider that cheating because it's four I and that's easy. And, and the nose are always I mean, it's, it's like to me. That's the hardest thing to coach, man, is the really? coach of four I. Oh shit, dude. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait. I mean, I, I would to coach four to te- to and do it well to teach us four eyes, I think is the the I shouldn't say the most it's one of the most difficult things to do on defense. I, I think I was able to teach four eyes really easily because well, it came easy to me was because I taught seven technique for so many years. Right, and that's how you had to so play. So you just it. strike the you strike the tight end and key the tackle. It's that's what it yeah. is. So I'm like, yeah, that's easy, and everybody's like, what? Yeah. Well, um, and then you, to to because that's like that's yeah. one way we'll key our four eyes too. Like we'll read the guard, right? We'll strike the tackle. We'll read the guard, like it's like seven or six technique, like you talked about. Um, but then you like if you get an ass whipping, you know that, that yeah. like I showed in the video that guy that went the skinner to get drafted at, from Union, going against the, our our you know, country boy, you know, four eye, you, you run into some issues there, man. I mean, you, get, you know, where your eyes aren't where you're, you know, where you're, where you're, you're striking, not where your eyes are at. Like your visual key is different than your attack key is when it becomes difficult. When that, when that guy you're aligned on is really good, you like to be able to key the tackle or the guard, whoever you're aligned on, whether you're a four or two as much as possible, because you're a hell of a lot stronger where your eyes are at. Every off season, I kind of make a, a a sketch, a, a sketching like a list of uh, sketch out a list of stuff I want to learn, and what's been on there every year, for years it was pass pro where I could understand pass pro to a level like Kasky does. How about that guy? That was awesome the other night. That was that. If you was, guys didn't see that? Go watch. If you're a defensive one. guy, go watch. He basically talked because that's how we talk. He was basically like this. Okay, here's the protection. Now here's how you beat it. And I was like, yes. Yeah, um, it was really good. I paid dude, that yeah, dude hundred dollars an run. hour to wow. teach me shit, and he'd be like, "Cause I'd be like, how do you block this?" And he's like, "Oh, here's a new one we're seeing." I'm like, "Oh shit, that's a really good idea." Yeah, like he showed me. I I had seen it, but not. He showed me the loaded front where you know Zimmer read the center, where they were mm-hmm. reading the guard off the loaded front away from the away from the load because mm-hmm. teams because I was like. Why not just go in 5 0? Why shade that guy? And he's like, because you they'll a lot of teams have a hard wired code where if you go um 5 0, they'll go 5 0. But if you have a really good backer and you want to screw with the guard, get in the load, they'll half slide it. And then you can work you like kind of like what Brian was talking about. Like if they're big on big, do this. If they're slide, do that. And he, you can bait them into certain things. And I'm like, and like the thing with the double A's. I didn't realize this. You and I have talked split mud package, split mug package rather for years. Yeah. That's how we first met talking about the bear stuff. Yeah. Well, Kyle was like, blew my mind. He goes, dude, the double A don't mean shit anymore. I was like, what? He goes, we're talking NFL, by the way, this is not, I mean, I'd still run it in high school. He said, it's not that it, let, let me rephrase that. It's not that it doesn't mean shit. It's we're not worried about the double A's. We make the Abby left, Abby right call, which you slide, you bring the guy up. He goes, the secret to Zimmer, he goes, he's like, what do you think the secret to Zimmer was? And I said, well, it's the double A stuff. And he goes, it wasn't. It was the fact that they would also walk Harrison Smith down. Because now we got a problem. And then he goes, and then if you cheat that nickel in just a two steps, you got a little bit of a problem. All right, I'm going to give a little something. I'm going to give a little Kyle Kasky thing real quick. I wouldn't plan on doing this, but I'm going to give a little bonus tip. Kyle taught me this with protections. This is for the guys that decided to stick around. He taught me to really screw with an offense, do this. Sorry, my chair's really squeaky. Let me pull up my play back here. 
one little movement, he said, screws everything up. And I don't remember exactly why. I mean, he took me through it. I can speak in, in general, but um, here, let's do this. Or not. All right, there we go. All right, I'm going to try and share my screen here. All right, can you see this? Or it says wide Baker, right? Yep. All right. So we're talking about protections. And he said, you want to screw with an offense? Let me see if I can remember exactly what it was. Now I'm all, I was all out the track. So you're getting the slide to the right. So let me put the three techniques to the right. Okay. You can get him out of there. All right. So if you're here, these four are going to take these four. Man, you're reading, um, you know, one to two. What he would say is he's blocking here to out here. And it, they it, the rule, I believe, in half slide, and if you, any offensive guys are watching this, probably going to laugh at me, but it takes two to scan. And when they mean scan, means comes back across. So what Kyle would say is if they bring the star or the nickel off the edge, they can still pick this up with the back. But if they bring two guys, now the back has to scan. The scan okay. So right now the center would count because you're. this is the slide side. This is the man side, right? So what, what Kyle was saying was if you put the mic here or here, you're good. But as soon as you take this mic and you take him on or past the center just slightly you can screw up their whole rules where now you line up like this the center can't count this guy in the slide i think that's what he was saying so now the sort goes here here the back would be one to two so if you bring him from here they won't pick it up. I think that's what now I, I I'm second guessing myself, but he was saying, if any line guys are in here, make sure I'm saying this right. But he was just basically saying like, if more guys took their mic and took them over the center or past where the slide, and this is obviously, if you know, the slide's going to be going this way, that it does something to their count. And again, I, I, I thought I had my notes in front of me that I could open up, but I don't, but now it, it screws up their whole count. And, and just by moving a guy a yard or two, just simple stuff like that. That that's where coaching to me is. You know, you're not going to reinvent the wheel every week or whatever. Uh, as who I say, Noel at Sarah used to say, create the wheel. Um, but <laughs> we're not going to create the wheel or anything. But uh, little stuff like this screws with people, and just knowing these little things and what to do, and and what Kyle was saying was like he was calling seven up and eight up. So this would be Abby Abby call. So that's their A, A, A double A to happen. So what they're going to do is they're going to go Abby, Abby. Well, let me flip it. I'm actually going to flip it to the offense. Abby, right. Meaning man, man, back's going to step up and take this guy center on the mic, you know, slide side this way. They could go Abby left and then he would cross and take the mic for a better angle or you could move him up. But what Kyle was saying is, is what really made this thing get screwed up was this. Because now all of a sudden, what do you do? So if the back's over here and they're sliding to this, they're going to try to slide and set on the midpoint. And what Kyle was saying, you'd have to now slide him out to the free, slide him to the end, the center to the tackle, the back up inside here. No, he was saying, no, I'm sorry. Out, out, out. They'd still have to be here. No, I'm sorry. So this is where the two, I'm, I'm sorry, I had to screw up. This is where this, it, it takes two rules. So he would have to do like a stop sign. So he would vertical set, try to take both these guys on. And then this guy would have to come back across. But then he was like, well, if you do this, I know I'm probably screwing this up. But if you take your nickel, and I know he talked about this, where if you take your nickel and your, let's say your slot receiver's out here, now they have to count this guy, and that's when he gets all crazy. So you're doing double mug. If you go from here to here, like two yards, it completely screws them up. Now they have to count this as an eight up, and now they're going to start bringing tight ends in. 
So these little cues about where you can mess with people or what Mike McDonald does, he's not the first one to do it, but what Mac does is he lines up like this. And if you've ever seen it on tape, he did in Michigan, he would fly him back to the middle of the field and bring this guy and then rotate down. And that's why, because they'd have to slide with this guy walk down. Now the slide would have to go to the boundary. And now you could bring the nickel and now you're one-on-one to the field because now the slide's going this way. And even still, you can't drop out, look out because these two mean drop out, look out is like this guy drops and he goes here. Then I can, I can bang back. I can bang back. But if you're still bringing those guys, the back has to take one to two. And now you got this guy on a back, but he's having to check inside. And that's why he was talking about it's key that these guys do this stuff and then go because the back's going to have to step up. These two have to stay on here because again, this guy forces them to slide left. He bails too late. They can't read, they can't redirect um, the slide. And then this guy comes off the edge scot free. So now you've completely changed everything by just moving one guy up on the line. Now, if you're in high school, can you do this? Can you line this guy up here and then spin his ass back? You know? So just some random shit, but like, I don't even know. Again, I don't even know where I was going with this, but just random stuff that he talked about that we had talked about off camera or off, you know, all throughout the the winter. And I was like, dude, you got to come on this clinic and talk about this. It was, it was great. It, I mean, it was, it was big time because we run both those fronts. And so to hear, you know, guys, what their answers were to it, you know, what his at, at the highest level was, was really good. Cause at, in high school, to be honest with you, if they don't know how to block shit, they're just going to full slide it. You know, they, yeah. uh, they're not. Well, that was the other thing they would full slide, but only in, in two jet, like in, in 200 jet where they're going to throw the ball quick and then right. go hot off one side. Right. So hold on. They, hold they, on they, one they second. They knew where the unblocked guy was going to be. All right, guys. Does anybody else have any questions? I got I to gotta run here pretty soon. Uh, if anybody doesn't have anything, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Um, Adam, this week has been fun. It's gone by really fast. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, I know you're going through a lot of stuff. Thanks for coming on. I'm late on a Friday night to talk um give give people i don't I don't know if they didn't have enough football this week they got a little bit more so i appreciate you jumping on with me absolutely brother thank you i, I appreciate it man it was uh I, i'm uh so appreciative of, of you and jay and can't verbalize how thankful we are for both you guys i know i said last night but you know from the bottom of my heart and, and kenzie's heart the same way um and then you know the guys that jumped on to to present you know Guys are right in the middle of, of recruiting and they got, you know, different things going on, starting new jobs, with new staffs, first day on the job, and they're jumping on the clinic to present just to help out. Just unbelievable. And then uh, you know, everybody that 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 donated money and, and bought the clinic and that donated money even to the GoFundMe that, that you set up for us, um, just overwhelmed, man, just overwhelmed with – like I said, I, I, we got interviewed by one of the TV stations and I, I said, you know, you always see the negative side of social media. You know, Kenzie and I have really seen the positive side with what, you know, Coach Vass has done, you know, outside of all the people, you know, sending, you know, sharing their stories about, um, you know, their wife had breast cancer. Their wife had triple negative breast cancer, the exact same kind of breast cancer Kenzie has. And, you know, if there's, you know, I've got Division One coaches that have had this, issue happen and you know with their wives and, and they're reaching out to me um coach if there's anything I can do you ever want to talk let me know you know because it's you know it's it's been difficult even already you know just we just had surgery but you know it's it's been been tough you know been tough and Kenzie's very strong mentally physically but it's still still been been tough um you know to 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 go through this process and we got a long ways to go not even close to being done but just to see the outpouring of support, man, it's crazy. Been unbelievable, led by you and Jay, and um, you know we uh, forever in your guys' debt, man, and and everybody that's 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 helped us. We will uh, we will certainly um, this will not be the end of us trying to to help others. And uh, if there's any way we can lead the charge, I don't, you know, I'm just a Harry High School coach. But if there's any way we can get the message out, you know, there's a I'm a video I'm gonna put on Twitter, thanking everybody that that. Um, took part in it, but also Kenzie's 
uh, in the video and she's talking about early breast exams and husbands pushing their one. Now my, now my wife's has a history of breast cancer in her family. So she checked regularly, uh, but she's in the video talking about coaches, talking to their, you know, girlfriends, wives about getting them, you know, to pushing them to, to check and make sure they're getting checked. And if there's a question, go, <clears throat> go to the doctor. Don't be scared of it. Go to the doctor, you know, no matter what it is. Cause my wife, she had had some benign stuff before uh, when we first, we were dating, we weren't even married yet. Uh, and so uh, initially that's kind of what they thought it was. Even the, the, the medical practitioners uh, thought it was. And, and uh, as they got into it, there were some irregularities with, with how it looked, mammogram biopsied. Uh, and then the biopsies, what revealed that it was, uh, it was cancer. And then we got, you know, finally what, it, what type of cancer it was. And so it early detected, you know, good, you know, good uh, sort of high survival rate, positive, um, you know, a po hopefully a positive outcome, you know, long, long, long term. But the chances of, of uh, her surviving are really good long, long term just because of, of discovering it uh, so early, um, stage two, very small. So, um, you know, to, to, I know there's not a lot of guys on here, but anybody that sees it to, to please, um, you know, go do that and, and urge, whether it's your mom, girlfriend, wife, sister, <clears throat> whoever it is, you know, um, we're going to get my daughter genetic testing, you know, to see if, if she carries some of the same genes that, that Kenzie did. And, and even, uh, you know, Kenzie's dad that just had, uh, uh, leukemia that just had a stem cell transplant. So he's recovering. So that, that adds to the, you know, that adds to the, the story of what's going on with us right now. We've got, um, my father-in-law that's, that's recovering from, from, a uh, uh, very like super rare way, even more rare than Kinsey's, um, cancer. So go do it. And then, and then I just want to thank you guys. You know, you guys have been awesome, you too. And then, uh, you know, the, my coaching brothers reaching out to me and, um, you know, <clears throat> keeping, you know, keeping me in their thoughts and prayers and, you know, uh, sending love and always just checking in on me. You know, how you doing? How's Kenzie doing? How are the kids doing? And, uh, you know, I got a, got a great support group around here too. Coach Riggs is awesome, our head coach. So uh, it's, it's a tough road to hoe, but makes it easier. <clears throat> When you got people around you and people like you uh, and Jay that are uh, that are going to help a brother out um, when they need it. So thank you, guys. I appreciate that, man. I really do. It means a lot. Um, I'm not going to go on the rant I went on yesterday, but if you're still around, you're still watching this, there will be more to come. Paperwork's to be filed soon. This is going to be something that maybe different causes and different things, but as I said yesterday, we're we're in charge of watching out and helping a lot of other people and their kids and well the their the kids and you know family you get sucked into family things. I don't mean that in a negative way, but you get you know mom, you know you're consulting the child because the mom lost a job. I mean, there's a lot of things that come with it, but the, I don't feel like there's enough really anybody looking out for coaches. So it's going to become the, and this may be where my life goes now. I mean, I don't know, maybe I won't, I don't know, but I, I feel called to do something and this is kind of inspired. I know me to, to do, to, to make something permanent and take this and turn it into something. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. But I, I talked to my attorney today. Uh, it's one of my, I mean, went to high school together. He's one of my best friends, but he forms companies and I got my notepad sitting right next to me with all the stuff I got to do. And, and we're going to talk more on Monday and try to get this down and while well, the momentum's going. So appreciate you being the inspiration. I wish it was under better terms, but no doubt go, go kick some ass and um, hope everybody enjoyed it and, and learned a lot. So with that, I'm going to say good night. Thank you guys so much for joining us and uh, see you soon. <laughs>